quality. It should be a little bit easier for all that we're doing. So that is the plan. Um, in addition to that, if you got enough cash to swing it, or if you know somebody that does it, steal from it, get yourself a plan finder. If you can't, um, I'm going to try and procure as many as I can to pass out for students. The idea is I'm going to throw a bunch of graph paper in there whenever you do writing for stuff. I'd like you to do it in there. It's not like if you don't, shame on you. You know, oh, you did it on a piece of paper and you threw it away. Ah, no, it's not for a grade or anything. I just figured it could be a place where you can put all your writing. That way, if you're like, well, I tried this and this and I don't remember what I was doing, I can say, okay, well, let's take a look at this and see what you were doing. Take a look at your post. Give you a spot to play with math, come back to different ideas. Maybe you're playing around with something. Like I've got a kid that told me a story about how he did division differently than what they taught in like third or fourth grade, but always get it wrong because he did it the wrong way. The answer was right, but he did it the wrong way, quote unquote. So like stuff like that where you're playing around with math, doing different things, it's pretty cool. You guys come up with some stuff that's neat. So that new division method is actually pretty awesome. So if you guys are messing around with stuff like that, I'd like to see it. I'll give you credit for it. And that's a good way to do it. Okay. Good morning, Camper. First day of October, baby. Completed an entire month, basically. This is exciting. This is exciting. How is everyone on this glorious morn? Fantastic. Hello, Chase. All righty. Let us take attendance. Today we're talking about Euclid's fifth postulate, the most famous of all the postulates. You know it. Crazy stuff. All right, let's get Tendi up. I don't see Paul, I don't see Grant, I don't see Gerilyn, I do not see Mace Sandra, I do not see Parker, I do see Chase. No Jocelyn today, huh? Hope she's doing okay. Um, Joe, Carly, Connor, Afton, Blaze, Brennan. Okay. Oh, hey, Miss Sandra. Hello. All right, so I'll keep this up. So today we're talking about Euclid's fifth postulate. And that, when I say fifth postulate, what questions do you come, come to your mind? What question? What? What is it? Great question. What's another one? Why is it? Oh, look at this guy. He, he knows what I'm looking for. I'm always asking about the why questions. He's like, why is it? 100 points to you. Well done. Oh, hello. I'm told what, who, when, where, why. There you go. You're welcome. Good morning. Hey, Grant. What other questions might you have? The fifth postulate. Sounds like some kind of sci-fi novel. Like the fifth element. You guys ever seen that? Don't see it. Don't see it. And who's Euclid? Right? This is the most controversial of all the postulates. I've mentioned before, depending on who you talk to, there's four, five, or six. The fifth one's the, the weird one. Um, hi, Darren. We need to get together and talk about portfolio stuff. Actually, no, we don't. Yeah, we do, because I didn't meet with you last time. Euclid's fifth postulate. It has to do with parallel lines, essentially. And I don't mean the Robin Thicke song or whatever it is. Not Robin Thicke. Who is it? What's his son's name? 500 points, whoever knows. Parallel lines. Who wrote it? 500, 5,000 points to whoever knows it. Five bajillion. Dead or alive, right? You guys know how to throw the ball? You done that? Yeah. That's right, you have. Carly, you don't want five bajillion points? 
Wow. I don't understand. I thought if I gave you points, you guys would do stuff. Isn't that a way to motivate kids? Is it Alan or is it Robin? It's one or the other. Alan Thick is his dad. Robin Thick is the guy. I win. Five million points to me. I win. All right, so parallel lines. Other than the song that you probably don't know about, and you shouldn't. Um, what do you know about parallel lines? Yes? I love this. Wow, we should have an entire class where we're only allowed to mime, and I'm only allowed to teach you through gestures, and you're only allowed to answer with gestures. What do you know about parallel lines? He's right. We got this going on, right? If you go to a St. Louis Blues hockey game, you know what a power play is? You guys know what hockey is? Okay. So you get a penalty in hockey. You go to the penalty box. You're aware of this concept? Yes. Okay, good, great. So when you go to the penalty box, what happens? Well, instead of having five skaters on the ice versus five skaters on the other team, now you got four skaters versus their five. They call it power play because the other team has one more dude than you. And the odds are they should be able to score, right? They call it a power play. And the St. Louis Blues are sponsored by Amron, the energy company. And so when they get the power play going, oh, I need this on here. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba right, the Mortal Kombat theme. You know what I'm talking about. They start playing that. And now it's time for a Missouri Amron power play. Ba -da -ba -da. All right, they're going all out. And in the stands, what you do is you do this. Do you know why you do this when there's a power play? Because oh. you're an outlet and you're plugging it in. I learned that last year, and now you know it too. Now we have to know this together. What will you do with this forbidden knowledge? So, postulate, right? It's something that we can't prove. It's a strange thing that we just have to accept to be true because that's just how society works, and if it didn't work, we wouldn't have society. Much like the Missouri Amber Power Play Dance. Parallel lines. They never touch, right? That's the idea. They go on and on forever, but they never intersect. There's like some beautiful poetry about how there's like these two people, they have so much in common, but they'll never meet. Isn't that sad? Doesn't that make you just want to cry, Carly? No? Okay. I'm trying, guys, I'm teaching math here. I don't have a lot to work with. We're trying to spice it up a bit. So, two lines are never going to touch, never going to meet. That's what parallel means. Now, how do we know they're never going to meet? Ooh. How do we know? Yeah. But how do we know it doesn't like... Like, how do, how do we measure that distance? How would you measure, how would you measure that distance? With a, ruler. With a ruler. Now, we don't have rulers in here. We don't believe in stuff like this. It's anarchy, right? Geometry, no rulers. But if I were to stick a ruler like this, when we measure stuff, this is, this is going to be kind of complex. Okay, we got, what's this guy's name? Okay, this is Bob, right? He's got his friend Jimmy, and Jimmy wants to stand back to back with him to see who's taller. Now, why do we stand back to back? If Jimmy stood like this, is that going to be a fair, like, measure? Why not? What's not fair about that? Because Jimmy got scoliosis. No. Jimmy does not have scoliosis. What is he doing? What? Cartwheel. A cartwheel? It does kind of look like that. Jimmy is not in motion. He's leaning. He's leaning. What's the film? What's the film? It's an old film about a girl and a guy. It's a rom-com. And he like leans in, you know what I mean? He's like leaning in, getting closer, like, oh, will they, won't they? And the guy comes up in the apartment, he's like, hey, this guy bothering you? Because it looks like he's leaning. You ever seen that? Good, fantastic, awesome. We're two for two with the references today. So he's leaning! And that's not fair, because if Jimmy were to stand up, what would happen? If he would stand up straight, he would be taller. It wouldn't be a fair measurement, right? It looks like they're the same height here. So what we need is a ruler that's standing up straight. Now, how do we know this ruler standing up straight? How can we make sure it's standing up straight? What is that? What is this concept of standing up straight? 90, 90 degree angle? Where? Where's the 90 degree angle? Because I've got lots of angles here. Uh, like at the bottom. Of the at the bottom? Which one? Uh, 
where it intersects with the other line. It's like 90 degree angle. Gotcha. So we kind of have to treat one of these lines as like the ground more or less, right? And so when we're standing up, we need to make sure that we make a 90 degree angle with the ground. We're standing up straight. We're perpendicular to it. You ever heard that word? Perpendicular? Very funny word to say. Make sure you say it quickly and don't slow it down. All right, so if this, then we know that this ruler is straight, right? And we're measuring straight away. Is that all we need to know? I provide you a counter argument. And I'm going to tell you this is 90. Well, it's measured straight. Looks like the distance right here is something. It's got to be 90 both ways, doesn't it? Right? And if that's true, if I draw lines here, will those lines always be the same distance from here to here? What about if I did this? Not same distance, right? So to guarantee that they're the same distance apart, that's what parallel is, right? We're talking railroad tracks, right? Might have learned about that in elementary school or something, you know? They have to be the same distance apart. And the only way we can guarantee that, according to Afton, is we have to have a straight measure. And the way we define straight measure is we have 90 degree angles, right? Cool, 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 cool. So this is Euclid's fifth postulate. We can't prove that they would never intersect, right? Because they go off into infinity. How are you going to prove that? But it looks like this would make sense, right? that they should never bend down because they're 90 degrees here. The way Euclid phrases it in his postulate is he says, and again, like most Greeks, he's very wordy. Um, if you have two lines cut by another line and their angles of intersection, the internal ones, the ones that are inside, so these two are the ones that he focuses on. If those add up to 180, then you're good to go. They'll never intersect. Now, ooh, great question. See, that's the question we should be asking. Why did he just say both of these have to be 90? He says as long as they add up to 180, they're fine. What do you think about that? Is he? I don't know. He's a Greek. Could be. It's just a language translation. They have to use... I think their words contain a lot more of our words. So actually, they're less wordy. So they both have to be 90 here and here? Because I thought we said we, it had to be. He says it has to add up to 180. I mean, this does add up to 180, yeah? Okay, okay. Those look parallel, right? Let's say they are. An easy problem. I'm going to draw this line. Those obviously aren't 90. But what do you notice about this angle and this angle, the internal angles that he's talking about, right? They're inside the parallel lines, internal angles. What do you notice about that and that? You got a conjecture you want to make? Remember, conjecture is an educated guess that we're going to have to investigate. What's your conjecture? What do you think about these two? Brennan, you're nodding your head. They're not the same. Ooh, I like that. They aren't the same. They don't look the same. Yeah. They do look supplementary, don't they? Supplementary is when two angles add up to 180. Now, we have a special name for that because 180 is a really important number in here when it comes to angles. There's another important number. What's another important number in angles? 45. Eh, 45 is okay. Not as important. It doesn't make it in the top two most important angles. Number two is probably supplementary angles that add up to 180. What's the other, what's the top angle, the most important angle? Come on, you know it, you love it. Come on. When I say angles, you think right. Angles, right. Angles, right. And when two angles add up to 90, we call them complementary, okay? Complimentary. Um, why do we call them that? Because somebody decided that's what we're going to do. We needed a name for it because it came up so often, right, that we started using it. Supplementary 180, complementary, add up to 90. So 45 and 45, they're complementary. 30 and 60, they're complementary. 60 and 120, supplementary, because they add up to 180. You dig? All right. So these two angles look supplementary. <clears throat> if only we could prove that. 
So Euclid says, as long as the angles in between here are supplementary, they can either both be 90 or they could be like, I don't know, 160 and 20. I, as long as they add up to 180, these lines will never intersect. And it's a postulate, something that we just kind of have to believe because if it weren't true, it actually screws up mathematics. In fact, this is the where the word non-Euclidean geometry comes up. Euclidean geometry accepts the postulate that if they're supplementary inside, then these lines will never intersect. Non-Euclidean geometry is the geometry of, okay, but what if they didn't? And that's kind of how math works sometimes. When we don't know whether it's true or false, we explore both avenues. When you come to a fork in the road, you take it. What if it's true? Euclidean geometry, here we go, the class, right? <laughs> well, what if it didn't? Non-Euclidean geometry. And let me tell you, things get weird real fast. Let me show you something. People are trying to think, like, where would it be true, obviously true, at least seemingly true, enough to where you could say it's a postulate, right? we got to accept that it seems to be the case. Um, where would it be true that you have lines that are supplementary inside but will still intersect, right? And Euclid, actually not Euclid, it was non-Euclid people, thought about this. What if the paper we're drawing on isn't flat? What if the paper we're drawing on is round? Because you see here, kids, if you were to take a line around this thing, is that going to show up? Yeah, sort of. Right? You see how this looks like a straight line, but it's actually curved, right? Because it's on a globe. And I draw two parallel lines here, parallel-ish. Eventually, they might intersect. And the way they do this is some kind of weird version of the globe. As you can see here, nah, they're not going to intersect. They're good to go. But imagine this globe turned out. Like if I took the surface area here, the globe, and I tore off the map and laid it out flat. It's going to be curved, right? What was once straight is now curved. So what looks straight here on the globe when I were to take it off and put it down is going to end up curving. Why is this interesting? Because it turns out the globe is round. Like the, the, the earth. It's round. Are we going to debate this? Okay, fantastic. Because I'd love to, but I don't have time. So the earth turns out to be round. In fact, space is round. You're like, what do you mean space is round? Space is just like Space is curved. Einstein proved it. Space is curved. It's curved. When you go straight in space, you're actually curving a little bit. When you curve, you actually go straight sometimes. Very interesting. So it turns out the real world isn't this world. It's not flatland. You might think like, oh, this, like when I draw a triangle on flatland, well, that's a real triangle. No, real triangles in real life actually have a little bit of curve to them. It's space time. Don't worry about it. Okay, really advanced stuff. We're not going to talk about it. Crazy, weird theories. But it's, it's true. Otherwise, the universe wouldn't make sense, and so we go with what makes sense, I guess. But we're not going to talk about the universe. We're not going to talk about non-Euclidean geometry. We're going to talk about Euclidean geometry. And again, Euclidean geometry is when these two are 180, then these are parallel. They don't intersect. That's how we define a straight line compared to another line. So what does this mean, this fifth postulate? Well, let's just do some pretty cool things. Quick question. What's the measure of this angle right here? Did we? I labeled these two. What about this guy? Why probably 90? Why? Because a line is 180, right? And 180 minus 90 is 90. This guy got to be 90, right? He's making up the rest of the line. And that makes sense. What do you notice about these two angles? If I turn it like this, maybe it's easier to see it. What do you notice about these two angles? Congruent. They're congruent. That's true. We just said that earlier. Nice job, Brennan. What else do we know about these two? What kind of angles are those? We just did a proof recently. I talked to uh, Blaze about it at the beginning of class. What kind of angles are those? Over there on the board, that's what it looks like over here. 
vertical angles. These are vertical, aren't they? And we know by vertical angles theorem that the vertical angles are always congruent in an X, right? And that's an X. So of course these have to be the same. So I know that this is 90 for two different reasons. I know one, for what reason? Have that up to 180, right? And that's 90, so this has to be 90. What's the other reason I know it has to be 90? This one has to be 90 because the red one is 90, yeah. The other vertical one, right? And again, you're like, what do you mean vertical? It's like up and to the right. Well, I mean, tilt the diagram. Now it's vertical, right? We learned that vertical angles and horizontal angles are both actually going to be congruent. They just focus on vertical for some reason, right? Because I guess you can t make any vertical angle into a horizontal angle and vice versa, right? It's all perspective. So all these are 90. That's exciting. All right, I'm done with that. There's not many more questions I can think of. But what about here? What about here? Now, remember, we said these two lines are parallel. The symbol for parallel is to do like a little arrow that's colored in. And that tells you they're never going to intersect. And if we know that they're never going to intersect, according to Euclid, these must add up to 180. So we know blue and green add up to 180. That's fun. I'm going to write that down. According to Euclid, since these are parallel, these must add up to 180 degrees. That's our definition of parallel, basically. And if they weren't, we'd be, you know, in the real world. <laughs> Space-time is curved. Question. What about the other angles in this diagram? What do you know about them? Afton! Which one are we talking about? You don't even know which one we're talking about. Let's number them. How about this? Angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, angle 4, angle 5, angle 6, angle 7, angle 8. Let's talk. Go. Angle five is the same as angle four. Angle five is the same as angle four. Why? Because they have to add up 180, and if blue and green add up 180, that means if one moves to the other side, it's going to equal 180. All right, I'm going to try and say what he's saying in a different way. He's doing the Greek way. Many words, and I appreciate that. Can you imagine me not being like lots of words and talking a bunch? Have I ever been concise? Case in point. Okay, so... He's saying this has to be a green angle, the same as this one. What do we know about angle five and angle six? Somebody other than Afton. What do we know about angle five and angle six? They have that up to 180 because they're on a line. We call this linear pair theorem. We never gave it a name before. Linear pair theorem. And basically it's a theorem that says, and we can prove it because it's a theorem. That if you have two angles that make up a line, those angles it must add up to 180. They must be supplementary, right? So yeah, these two must be supplementary. Now, we don't know what blue is, right? We never said what blue is. It could be 30, it could be 40, it could be, I don't know, right? But we do know that the angle that makes it 180, its supplementary pair, is the green angle, right? So imagine this is 40. What would the green angle be? <laughs> Say it again? 140, right, because we got to get to 180. Now, could there be any other value it could be? If this is 40, could green angle be anything other than 140? No. Absolutely not, right? So one angle kind of locks in the other, right? So blue and green always got to go together. So we know that this is green. Oh, this is interesting. So if we have parallel lines, these two angles will always be the same. Where? Six and, four, three are the same. Six and three must be the same by the same logic, right? Because they're linear pairs. They go together to make 180. What else do we know? Yes! They're a bunch of X's, so blue, so six X is the same as seven. And okay, so why are you mentioning X's? Why are you bringing it past trauma? Vertical angle theorem. So by vertical angles theorem, we know that these two have to be the same, right? Crisscross applesauce, something like that, I don't know. If I ever say that again, please just take me out back. All right, so these two angles have to be the same by vertical angles theorem. How else do I know that that has to be blue? Vertical angles theorem's one way. What's another reason I know it has to be blue? Afton's turning his head. 
Like those German Shepherd puppies. What? Yeah. See how this is a straight line? They have to be a linear pair then. And what's the linear pair to green? Well, blue. So we know two reasons, right? Vertical and, hey, they're a linear pair. Have to be, otherwise these wouldn't be parallel, right? What else do I know? Someone other than Afton. Not because I don't like you. Okay, that reason's separate. I have fun. Do you got, can you guys tell I like my job? Okay, good. Then I won't say it. I probably still will. I really love my job. What else you got for me? What else do we know? My mom's name is Shelly. And to annoy her, like, I want to go over to my friend's house. And she's like, no, we can't. Like, come on, Shelly. Come on. Come on, Shelly. That's what I feel like I'm doing to you guys right now. Come on. Come on. What do you know? Five and eight. What about them? Ooh, I like that. Look at that. Vertical angles. They're the same. That'd be true. Guy's showing off a little bit. They are uh, vertical angles. I, I've been to geometry class. Mm, yes. mm. What else do you know? Really? <laughs> you thought? <laughs> Come on. What else do you know? Come on, Shelly. Uh huh? Can you give it a try? One in four, what about them? Yeah, which means they must be the same, right? By vertical angles theorem, they have to be the same. All right, Carly. Three and what? Three and two are the same. Isn't that funny how in geometry class, three and two are the same? Comes up sometimes. They have to be because why? Exactly. Or linear pair here, or linear pair here, right? As soon as we know this, everything else just kind of pops up, doesn't it? So this postulate, this parallel postulate that says if they're parallel, or actually it says the other way around. It says if these two angles, the internal angles on the same side, right? See how they're on the same side of this guy? See how they're internal, they're inside the parallels, right? So if the internal same side angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. Now this goes both ways. If the lines are parallel, then the internal angles will be supplementary, right? It's chicken or egg, right? Doesn't matter which way you go. The symbol for that is this. A single arrow says, if A, then you get B, right? You play stupid games, you get stupid prizes, right? But sometimes you can get stupid prizes without playing stupid games, right? Sometimes that's just how life is. So this doesn't go both ways, right? Not necessarily. But whenever you play stupid games, you guarantee stupid prizes, right? You heard that one? When it goes both ways, it says it doesn't matter which order, right? You can say they're parallel. That means these are supplementary. Or you could say, look, I've got some lines that are supplementary here. Oh, that must mean they're parallel, right? Either way. Again, these angles right here, we call them same side internal angles okay the two parallel lines are these lines I'll call that line L I'll call that line M I don't know we use cursive a lot of time when we label lines just how it is this is another line I'm gonna call it line T and the reason I call it line T is because it helps me remember that this type of line a line that cuts two other lines is a transversal I'm gonna say it again all a transversal is is a line that cuts two other lines. Does this line cut two other lines? It does. Now, the fact that these are parallel has nothing to do with this being a transversal. Dude, that's a transversal. It cuts two other lines. In fact, I've got three transversals here, right? Because this guy cuts two other lines as well. This guy's also a transversal because he cuts two other lines. But magic happens when you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Because then you get all this. 
And that's pretty great. How you feel? Today's a good day. Euclid's fifth postulate, baby. Uh, let's talk a little bit about naming some of these angles because we had to number them before and that's fine that works you can put letters down right you can do that um, I'm gonna number them again just to make it really fast and then we're gonna talk about what these numbers go with okay so when reading this type of map which you're gonna have to be used to because we're gonna have to talk about these angles a lot okay we look at the intersection points I have two intersections right for my transversal Four angles for every intersection, right? The way we name these is such. So I'm going to color these in, not because they're congruent, right? Before I did, I colored what was the same, right? Because they measured the same amount. I'm going to color in based on name now, okay? These are same side interior angles. Why are they called interior angles? Close, almost got you. Why do they call them interior? We'll talk about the same side in a second. Why do they call them interior? Yeah. They're inside what? The parallel lines. Now, sometimes the lines aren't parallel. They're still same side, if, even if they're not parallel. But we'll go with parallel for now. Makes it simpler. Parallel is much more interesting. Why do they call them uh, uh, same side? They're inside interior because they're inside the parallels, right? Why are they same side interior? Yeah. Uh, because they're on the same side. Yeah, they're on the same side of the transversal, both on the right side. You digging this? These names are not something to memorize. They're just something like, oh yeah, duh. What else would I call them? Right? Angle four and angle six. Well, I could have labeled them differently, right? You see any other same side interior angles in this diagram? Yeah. Three and five are same side interior, right? Cool, 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 cool. What about four and five? They're actually going to be the same, right? We talked about that last time. See how four and five are the same here? Four and five will be the same here if they're parallel. What would you call those? Are they same side? Are they on the same side? No, right? Same sides, either right side or left side of the transversal. And they're on left and right side. Are they interior? Why? Take your time. Yawn it out. Yes? Yeah. Right, so they're definitely interior, just like the last ones were. But they're not same side. What do you call something that's on opposite sides. Can't use the word opposite. I, I, I took that one. Uh -huh. We're on an A day, B day schedule, right? We switch back and forth. What do you call something that switch back and forth? Got any mechanics in here? Part of a car. Turn the key. Gets the motor running. Nope. After that. What? Nope, transmission doesn't get the car running. It gets the car running in which direction you want to go in, forward or back. Carly? Carly, your mechanic. Alternating. An alternator. Um, alternate means to switch back and forth. Your face froze. My face cam froze? Did the rest of me freeze? No? Okay. Let me see if I can fix that. No, I can't, so I'm just going to be like this, I guess. Alternate interior angles is what we call those. They're alternating. Does that make sense? Right side versus left side? What other alternate interior angles do you see in this diagram? Got to be alternate, got to be interior. Yo. Three and, six. Three and six, right? You digging? Now, if these alternate interior angles are congruent, won't three and six also be? So it turns out the alternate interior angles will always be congruent, right? There's a theorem for that. We can prove that. It's called alternate interior angle theorem. We'll get to it. 
Right now we're just worrying about name and stuff. We're just getting to know them, you know what I mean? What about this angle? This angle right here, is it interior? No, what would you call it? Exterior. <laughs> How does it relate to seven? Because it's an exterior angle. What would you call that? Yeah. Inside, exterior. Yep, makes sense to me. What other same side exterior angles do you see in the diagram? Carly's using the calculator. She's trying to figure out. Oh my god, what is it? What is it? What is it? Which ones? Carly, what does your calculator say? Which ones are also going to be same side exterior? Angle two and angle eight. Angle two and angle eight. What what app are you using for a calculator? Because it's pretty smart. Snapchat. Everyone should get Snapchat. It's a good mathematical tool. Obviously, it gave her the right answer. Two and eight. They're same side, right? Both on the right. They're alternate, or I'm sorry, they're they're uh, same side and they're exterior, right on the outside. Same side outside. Same side exterior. What about, let's use a different color. Carly, what's your favorite color? Green. Of course it is. Carly, what's your next favorite color? Yeah. Green? Oh, great choice. So, exterior, yeah. How do one and eight relate? No using Snapchat this time. You can do it on your own. Alternate exterior. Why alternate? I love this. We're doing the mining thing from now on. This is good. Yeah, they're like opposite sides, right? Same side versus opposite side. For some reason, they didn't like opposite side, so we go with alternate. All right, where are your gods now? Alternate interior angles, what do you know about them? Alternate interior angles will always be what? Sure, sure. I'm not talking about the definition now. I'm asking, like, what else do you know about them? Like, what, from based on this diagram, when the lines are parallel, alternate interior will always be what? Congruent, right? See how alternate interior? Congruent. Alternate interior? Congruent. Same side exterior, what do you know about them? Carly! They're supplementary, yeah. Add up to 180. Same side exterior. Give me an example. Which ones are you looking at? Which? Give me an example of same side exterior. Which ones are you looking at? Four and six. Same side exterior? No, you're fine. Same side exterior. You're good. Two and eight. That would be exterior, right? Exterior. I'll try to enunciate with my mask on. But what's cool about this is that she just revealed something. Same side exterior and same side interior are always going to be supplementary, aren't they? Right? Always. When the lines are parallel, of course. When they're not, we get something like this. Right? Not very interesting. Good job, Carly. Are you okay? No. Same side exterior. Right? Two and eight. Cool. Same side interior, four and six. Are we cool with that? Are you good or are you not? Great. Are you actually? Because yeah. if you're not, I really want to know. Okay. Connor? You have like a twin thing going on with her, right? You guys are like, you guys are like look-alike twins, right? Yeah. Is that the kind you are? No? Okay. I just thought you had different haircuts. Okay, so you're not the same. Do you still have twin powers? Guys, I used to have a twin. Did you know that? I did. Um, so, yeah, same side exterior, two and eight, they're going to be uh, supplementary. Same side, what would we call two, uh, four and six? What are they an example of? What kind of angles? They're same side, but same side. Oh. Interior. Interior, thank you. Look at this guy. On his A game today. It's because he's got his lucky socks on. Is it true? Those are lucky socks? They are now, bud. Guess what? They are now. Um, what about... Alternate exterior angles. Alternate X. Alternate X exterior. 
just want to make sure I enunciate. Read your email. It was okay. It was better. It was okay. I agree. I need you to get you better at arguing. That's why I'm picking on you today. Sure. Argue with me! I need to fix my camera. <clears throat> Same side exterior. Sorry, I, I alternate exterior. What do you know about him? Alternate exterior. First of all, give me an example of alternate exterior. Joe, what does it mean to be alternate? Different sides, right, of the transversal. So, you're never going to tell me 1, 3, 5, and 7, any of them are alternate, right? It's got to be like 1 and an even number for my diagram, right? What does it mean to be exterior? On the outside. Can you give me one that's exterior and has an alternate pair? 1 and 8. What do you know about alternate exterior angles according to this diagram? They'll always be what? What? I can't, congruent, is that what you said? Gotcha. Got to enunciate for Carly. Congruent. We can prove that just based on the definition of parallel lines, right? Same side interior are supplementary. Therefore, boom, 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 all those facts, right? Those are all theorems. The one we're going to use the most probably is alternate interior angles. Those are really useful. Because after you get the alternate interior angles, can't you just use vertical to get that? Vertical to get this, right? We use alternate interior a lot. So you're feeling confident, feeling good, feeling good, feeling good, right? Feeling good, feeling good. Uh-oh, how many lines do you see? Sure. Four. How do you deal with that at home? You ask a question? Sure. Maddie Banks says it's her fault that you say that. It is? Yeah. What if I know that these two are parallel? And I know these two are parallel. Now, why did I do two arrows for these guys? Why did I have to do two arrows? What do you think? Maybe you don't think. Why did L and M get one arrow, but P and N got two? Carly. These guys are parallel. If I had all single arrows, I could be like, oh, that means these two are parallel, and that ain't true, right? So we know from this diagram, L is parallel to M, and we know N is parallel to P. We don't know that P is parallel to L, right? Can't crisscross. So that's why I'd use two, you know, just keeping it real. You want to label them? Of course you do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's a 10. 13, 14, 15, 16, baby. What do you know about them? Go. Afton. I put dots because I'm not sure about this. Why is this congruent? Vertical angles theorem, right? Has to be. It's an X. But why does that mean nine is going to be the same? Because it's on the same angle. 
How do you know? Because these two lines are parallel. What's the transversal that we're looking at? If, if L and M are parallel, what's the transversal up here? Mm, does L hit two lines? I mean, we're just looking up here, right? Is what we're talking about. Do I need to look at this at all? No. Has nothing to do with it, right? Here's two lines. There's our transversal, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're more comfortable, you can look at it like this because that's typically how we, oh no, that's typically how we do, right? I give you a drawing like this. These two are the same. These two are the same. These two angles right here, we didn't have a name for them yet. Are they same side or alternate? Same side. Good. Are they exterior or interior? Yeah. Are they? Uh, Why? One's interior. One's on the inside, one's on the outside. We're doing the hokey pokey here. Right? These two will be the same. How do we know that? Yeah. Our definition of parallel lines, or at least the, the fifth postulate, says that parallel lines are parallel if their interior angles, same side interior, are supplementary, right? And if these are parallel, then these must be supplementary. So what do we know about blue and green? They're supplementary. So these two are supplementary. Why does that mean that this is also green? How do I know these two are associated, both green? I know this adds up to 180, or uh, that this and this adds up to 180, right? I gave it away. These two are also 180, right? How could they be anything else? So that's how we jump the gap. We're able to jump the gap because I know these two have to be 180, right? We'll call them blue and green. Well, if that's green and that's blue and they add up to 180, if that's blue, this one has to be green as well, right? And then green and green because vertical. So Afton's right, nine and 12 would also be green. How do we know that? Vertical angles. How do I jump the gap down here? Because he said 13 and 16 and 5 and 8 are green. How do we know? Brandon, you got something to say or no? Just stretching? Butterfly. butterfly. Is that what you're th how you're thinking of it? Explain the butterfly. Can you give me numbers? What are we talking about? Oh, gotcha. You just think about butterflies. That's fine. Good for you, man. One and four and 13 and 16 are the same. How do you know that? And if he doesn't know, can somebody else say why? Because Afton said the same thing. The hard part's backing up your reasoning, isn't it? Right? Guess what? That's the whole ball game, kids. You've been doing math and you've been saying, it's five! And they go, okay, good. You got the right answer, we're moving on. Never discussion of why it's the right answer. Take a look at this. We'll talk about it tomorrow. See if you can justify your reasoning. It's all based upon the idea that parallel lines, their same side interiors, are always supplementary, right? Fifth postulate. Bye, Carly. Have a better day. I hope your other teachers are nicer to you. What's up? Get excited. Today we're talking about the fifth postulate. I have a soundboard, but really, do I need one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me spray them all down. Did you get this back for you? Uh, no, it's good. We're just going to roll around a little bit. Kind of the class set, like a hedgehog or something. Okay. Don't step on it. Okay. Or feed him Cheetos. We'll be fine. Hello. Are you excited to talk about the fifth class today? Of course you are. Of course you are. Sure. 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 What? Is Maddie really to blame for that? Yes. Both of them really. Oh my god, hey. Mr. Maddie, is that Yes, she's down here. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. OK, have fun. Sure. 
That's what portfolio conferences with Maddie is like. Can I ask your question? Sure. 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 That sounds about right. Yeah, really. Do you have anything to say about that? Sure. Ooh, the updo really reveals it. I like it. Great, we need to meet for portfolio conferences. Oh, yeah. You okay? Huh? Promise you're okay. Yeah. Not like you to not be on top of things. You're more on top of things than I am usually. Which isn't saying much, let's be honest. Right. But, but, play a reference I have. It matches your portfolio. Are you into, are you into, are you into animal skin? That sounds so weird when you say it. I am, sorry. <laughs> Annie, it matches your portfolio. Is that like you're saying, like, eat a print or whatever? Some people hit 40-year-old age faster than others. I make a joke because every 40-year-old will not. Nothing wrong with that. How does one become Aaron Decker? Like, what was the origin story here? Something else? Gotta grow it. Like, feel the dream, still come. Grow it, you still Aaron. Speaking of fits, um, Jaden, have you seen him? He's all online. Oh, is he? Oh, he is all online. That's great. No. I haven't talked to him in a while. Need to reach out. You're taking the most stylish kids away from me. Now we'll be left with just Annie. Jason's here. Haley's here. Jaden's here. Oh, hey, Jaden. We're just talking about you. We need to get uh, portfolio conferences, bud. Um, Blake, Olivia, Campbell, Corinne, Theron, Sheon, Annie, Marissa, Katie. Um, Loralee. Oh, hi, Loralee. Uh, Mika, Jaden, where's Ethan? I see Jace. Sarah. Oh, there's Ethan. Where is Sarah? And I see Haley. So all I'm missing is Sarah. As of right now. Are you excited? You, of course you are. We're talking about the fifth postulate today. And when I say fifth postulate, it really begs the question, what are the first four? Right? Euclid, sure. Uh, Euclid says we only need five. People debate whether we really need the fifth one. Um, actually, well, there's debate over the six as well. We'll, we'll. we'll go with five. We'll go with five. It's, it's very debated in math circles. So, um, the fifth postulate has to do with parallel lines. What do you know about parallel lines? Katie, don't fret. It's okay. She's upset. She's like, oh no, not again. What do you know about parallel lines? You're right. Robin Thicke wrote a song. No. They never cross paths. You guys don't know what the parallel lines is, do you? Robin Thicke? No? Good. I'm glad you guys missed that. Hi, Sarah! Parallel lines, they never intersect. How do you prove that those never intersect? How would you do it? Well, there's a problem, right? It's a postulate for a reason we can't prove it. But how would you try to explain it, or at least check to make sure that it never intersect? What would you do? What would you do? And he's like, I would use my calculator. Same thing with Mika. Same thing with Campbell. What would you do on your calculator? Carly was doing the same thing last hour, and she's like, I'm not on my calculator, I'm on Snapchat. And I was like, oh, well, if that app has the answers, everybody should download it. Do it. I love picking on kids. You're not in trouble, I just want to pick on you. Is that fair? Okay, cool. I figured that's a good trade, right? How do you, how would you check to make sure they never intersect? If you're not sure how you do it, then why are you not sure? What's the problem? Yeah, go ahead, Marissa. What numbers would you use? What numbers would you use? What do you mean? Like, say you calculate it. 
Oh, that was a joke. I'm sorry, Marissa. I was making fun of the kids. Ask Annie. <laughs> or Mika or Campbell. What numbers are you guys using? <laughs> and they're like, uh... <laughs> I got one of you. Um, while you think about that, and you're like, think about what? I'll repeat my question. How would you check to make sure that these are parallel? Right, how do you make sure they never touch? What's your thought? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they both need to be traveling in the same direction. How do we define direction? Isn't this tough, right? Yeah. yeah. First hour jumped right on it, and they came up with a really interesting idea. I don't mean that to shame you guys, like the first hour. It's hard because there's such a finite length. Uh-huh. What is length, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. So if I gave you some lines that looked like they were perfectly straight like this, in the real world, let's pretend in the real world for a second. How would you make sure that they would never intersect? How would you check? If I gave, who's talking? I said draw them, draw them forever. And see if they ever intersect. Okay, that's one way of doing it. If you can go on forever. But now we're thinking in the real world. You're doing this. Right? In the real world, what would you do? You guys get what she's saying? She's saying, if I measure the distance between here and here, and I get a certain number, and then I measure it over here and get the same number, then they must never intersect. Okay. I buy that. How do we do it in imaginary land? How do we measure? What do you want to call him? Gerard. Gerard? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I feel like Gerard needs like a monocle. Gerard has a friend. What's, who's Gerard's friend? What? Diogenes. Diogenes? Yeah. And Diogenes and Gerard want to figure out who's taller. And Diogenes stands like this. And Gerard's like, see, we're the same height. Diogenes, behold a man. Um, what's wrong with this picture? Diogenes is what? Needs to go to the chiropractor. Needs to go to the chiropractor, right? He got scoliosis, right? Uh, that's not a joke. But they're like, look, see, we're the same height. He needs to stand up straight. Quit slouching, right? You'll never catch a man like that. You guys watch like period dramas like Downton Abbey, any Victorian stuff, right? Stand up straight. You'll never catch a man. No, mother. Diogenes needs to stand up straight. Now, how do we define standing up straight? Ooh, ooh, good idea. We'll just mime everything. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Everyone's been doing that today. I just think it's funny. Uh, yeah, uh, um, Afton Irick sitting over there, and he did the exact same motion that you did earlier. What's wrong with Afton? Yeah. Great. Why is this straight and this isn't? How do we define it? You guys ever heard Afton laugh? I love his laugh. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that Justin Bieber thing. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. 
You know what I'm talking about. Who's a Bieber person? You were a Bieber person. You probably still are, aren't you? No, not anymore. Not anymore. You open up her closet, you part the clothes, and there's a secret shrine. The Biebs. Y'all still suffering from Bieber fever? He's a good boy now. He straightened up. He was a bad kid before. Now he's like he's like all, all like clean cut and everything. But for real, when he was going through his phase of like I don't know dumbness for like ten years, he uh, he went to Disney World and uh, was putting on a concert. And I have friends that work at Disney World, and they're like, yeah, we met him and stuff. And he was like the worst human being we have ever met. Like he's a terrible human being. But apparently, he straightened up. There's still a chance you can change him. We're shipping Katie and Biebs. We're gonna make this happen, guys. We're gonna make this happen. How do you define standing up straight? Y'all are Googling it? Good idea. Katie, you messaging the Biebs? No. In geometry, HBU. How do we find standing up straight? You know it when you see it, right? What he need to do. What advice would you give to other than go to the chiropractor? Who's not standing up straight now? Gerard's the small. Gerard isn't standing up straight. What happened? What do I do? Gerard is standing up straight. Diogenes is not. Diogenes is standing up straight, although one leg a little longer than the other. That's okay. Now the other guy isn't. When you try to compare your height to somebody, what do you do? What do you do? Stand back to back. Why do we do back to back? Right? What does this do? Hello? You got jokes, you got to share them. That's the rule. Why do you stand back to back? <laughs> that was good. Here's the floor, and there's two people standing back to back right here. Stop it. <laughs> Stop judging me. How do you know that they're standing up straight? Y'all are like, eventually he's going to tell us, but you're wrong. What? What? Oh, okay. Yo, what's up? Their heels are back together, sure. Their backs are back together. What if he, like, stood, like, straight up, and then, like, did this, and the other person was, like, but on the other side? You know what I mean? Yeah. We need, like, two students to demonstrate? No, okay, we're good. How do you know that they're standing up straight? Why is this straight? You guys do any carpentry? Put up any walls? Build any houses? Yeah? How do you know something's straight? A level. A level measures whether it's like lopsided or not, right? We're talking about up and down. And so you put a level on the side of here. How does it know? Yeah. Yeah, there's a bubble. When the bubble's in the right spot, then you know it. So a level would work here. How does a level work? How does a bubble know? Why does it go to the center and not like the bottom or the top? 
Oh. Okay. I guess we're done with that discussion. Um, what about this guy? How do we know he's level? How do we know he's going up straight? <laughs> Just one of those things, huh? Nah. I can define it. I'm thinking about it. I want to know what you think. It's vertical. What do you mean by vertical? Ooh, okay, okay, okay. So we're on to something here. There's some relationship it has with the floor, right? Because if I just draw you a line, is that line standing straight up? What about now? I change your perspective, right? You must be comparing it to something else. You're comparing it to the frame of the camera, aren't you? Right? The bottom frame of the camera? Sure. What? It's a 90 degree angle. What is a 90 degree angle? Um, one. This one is straight because if I go to the bottom of the screen, it's 90 degrees. But now it ain't, right? So it has to be a thing of comparison. So how do we tell that these, when we measure them, right? Because that was the whole point, to make sure they measure the same here, measure the same there, always, right? When we measure them, we want to measure 90 to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a line. And we're going to make it 90. And if the distance between here and here is the same as the distance between... here and here, we're good. They must be parallel, right? That's how we do it in real life. We use this symbol for parallel. It's a little arrowhead colored in. If this angle's 90, let's label some angles, because we got a lot of angles here. We'll focus just on this, these ones. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're just focusing on this side of the diagram. If angle 6 is 90, what else do you know about the other angles? What else do you know? What do you know about angle five, six, seven, eight? All those. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, go ahead. They're all 90. How do you know that? Because say it again. Because six is 90. So based on six, the other ones have to be 90. Can anybody explain why that's true? He's right. Why does it have to be true? Can you back that up? What if I turned it like this? Would that help? Katie? If all these angles are the same, they would have to be 90, right? Because you divide by 4, 360 divided by 4. Good point. How do we know they're all the same, though? What about 6 and 7? What do you know about lines and angles? Scissor theorem. theorem. Your word's not mine. Corinne, give it to me. The angles across the mm -hmm. In an X, the vertical angles are congruent, right? Vertical angles theorem. They have to be. Y'all were bored out of your minds when we were doing this, right? But, yeah. Those both have to be 90. Okay, what about 5 and 8? How do we know they're both 90? So, Corinne is saying, we know these have to be the same, right? Because they're vertical, right? So whatever they are, they have to be the same. We have 360 total. 
minus 290 is 180. So both of these have to be added up to 180, and they both have to be the same. What two number, what number added to itself gets you 180? 90. So it has to be 90. What's another way we know that those are 90? What do you notice about 5 and 6? Drawings are hard. What do you know about this angle and this angle? Yo. They add up to 180 degrees because they're on a line, right? They make that line. And lines are straight angles. They're half of a circle, right? We call this a linear pair because it's two of them on a line. So they're a linear pair, right? They add up to 180. They're supplementary is what we call that. When you add up to 180, you call it supplementary. And the reason we have a special word for add up to 180 is because it happens so often, right? It's a really useful thing to find on a diagram. And so they got tired of saying they add up to 180 and just called them supplementary or a linear pair. There's another word for when they add up to 90 because that's really important too sometimes. We call it complementary. You'll catch on. So five and six had to be supplementary because they're a linear pair, right? See how they make up a line? So they had to be supplementary. And if six is 90, well, this guy has to add up with him to make 180. Only number I can think of that adds to 90 to make 180 is another 90, right? Now question, do we know anything about these angles up here? Not yet we don't, looks like. What if I had something like this? Obviously not parallel, these two lines, right? Obviously not parallel. Looking good so far, right? Almost. We had one that's 90. So it looks like having one line be 90 isn't quite enough to make it parallel, yeah? So what must be true about this stuff? If these are parallel, which I said they were, those little symbols, it's not enough for this just to be 90, right? Other line has to be 90 as well. Vertical angles. These are supplementary. Vertical angles. So in order for lines to be parallel, what must be true? Yo. All angles, All angles have to be 90 degrees. Good conjecture. Remember, conjecture is what we think it might be, and we're going to have to prove it. Now, there's two ways to do this, right? Either you find a counterexample that proves you wrong, and then you have to change your conjecture, right? Or you find a proof of it, and it becomes theorem, right? We're not allowed to add any more postulates. Euclid already took them all. I'm going to show you a counterexample. He says two lines are parallel if they're separated by 90, and that's the only way you can do it. You're like, wait a minute, Diogenes, you're leaning again. And you're right, he is. And I'm going to tell you that these are parallel. The question is, am I lying? Is there a way that they could be parallel? My assertion is that these are not 90 degrees, right? And before he said, has to be 90 for them to be parallel. And I'm saying, well, here's an example where I say they're parallel and they're not at 90. Am I lying or does your conjecture not get the whole picture? So I'm going to tell you these aren't the same. This angle here and this angle here. I'm going to tell you that this angle is the same as that angle. What do you know about the green and the blue angles? What do you know about green and blue? Yeah. They're supplementary. They make 180. How do you know green and blue have to add up to 180? 
Yeah, they make up a line. They're a linear pair, right? They're a pair of angles that make up a line. A linear pair has to be 180. They have to be supplementary. So we know this to be true. In fact, this is how Euclid defines parallel lines. He says, and it's a lot of words, but he says, if two lines have two interior angles on the same side that are supplementary, then those lines are parallel. Two interior angles. Interior means the inside, right? See how this angle right here, angle four and angle six, they're both on the inside of the parallels, right? Do you see how they're both on the same side of this line? We call that line a transversal. It cuts two other lines. Any line that cuts two lines is a transversal. So they're on the same side, and they're also on the inside. So we call them same side interior angles. And Euclid says, if they're on the same side and in the interior, and they add up to 180, then lines be parallel. Now, that's a postulate, so we can't prove it, but that's his assertion. There's a whole different version of geometry called non-Euclidean geometry, and it's based upon this postulate being the other way around, that if two lines have internal angles that add up to 180, then maybe they're not parallel. Right? Again, we can't prove it, so there's a one world of geometry that says, well, if they are supplementary, then they're parallel. And the other world says, well, what if they aren't? That's called non-Euclidean geometry. When do you have two lines that are parallel but aren't straight? I'll give you a hint. When do you have two lines that are parallel but not straight? On a globe, right? Those two lines are curved. They're going around the globe, right? But yet they are parallel. Non-Euclidean geometry asks the question, well, what if the world wasn't flat? And what's funny about that is that the world isn't, is it? Right, we don't really want to disagree with that? No? No? Okay. All right, we, we can talk. My question for flat earthers is what is under, what's, the, what's underneath it? Like, what's the other side? If the earth is flat, what's, what's, what's on the other side of it? I just want to know. I just want to talk. Anyway, um, it turns out the world is not flat. It turns out space isn't either. Space is curved. When you go straight in space, sometimes you're actually curving. When you go curvy in space, sometimes you're actually going straight. Space-time is curved. It's actually what causes gravity, according to Einstein. Imagine a trampoline, and you have a really heavy object. What happens, right? It bends in. It sinks in. And so gravity is that space bending because the object is really heavy. Now imagine you have a golf ball on the trampoline, and you set it down and you've got the other heavy object doing this, right? What happens to that golf ball? Where does it move? Towards what? Towards the heavy object. Sound like gravity to you? That's what's going on. Large objects bend space. So it turns out space is curvy, and this is the made up space. Kind of bizarre, huh? You think when you draw a triangle, it's like, well, that's a triangle. That's what real triangles are. But it turns out real triangles occur in the real world. And the real world is curved. So your triangle is more like this. And while it looks completely flat on the screen, we know it isn't. And if you add up all the angles, it's supposed to add to 180. You guys remember that from elementary school? They all add up to 180. Turns out they don't. But we're going to keep life simple, and we're going to stay in flat land. We'll start you out there. Where triangles add up to 180 for all their angles, everything's nice and peachy, straight lines are not curved. We're going to keep it like that. So if these two add up to 180, he says lines are parallel. Question, you said they had to be 90. Do these guys, number four and number six, do they add up to 180? Yeah, they do. So this is the special case where, hey, they have to add up to 180, and they're both 90, right? Cool, cool, cool. But they can also be, I don't know, 160 and 20. What do you know about these angles? What do you know about angle eight? Theron. Why is eight equal to four? Why is it another blue angle? How do you know that? Gotcha. So he's saying 
Green and blue always make 180, right? There's no other way to make 180. It's got to be green and blue. So if I see a green down here and I know this has to be 180, that must be blue as well. What else do you know about the other angles? What else do we know? Again, we're getting this all because these lines are parallel. What else do you know? What do you know about angle one? Maybe it'll help if I do this. What do you know about angle one? Yeah. Say it again. Same as angle four. Why is it the same as angle four? Explaining is the hard part, isn't it? Well, that's the whole ball game. Yeah, go ahead, Marissa. Yes, and don't we have a special thing about being right across and an X, right? We have an X, right across will be the same. What do we call that theorem? Crane calls it scissors theorem. I know, I know. What's the real name for it if you know it? Just asking. Anybody remember? Vertical, Vertical angle theorem, right? That would be the same. What do you know about angle three? Yeah, Annie? How do you know that? Yeah, and they're in an X, so vertical angle theorem says they have to be the same, right? And we can prove that if you want to, but we already did that, so why not? What's another reason that 3 has to be the same as 2? Yep, crisscross, right? But what's another reason? We had this originally, right? These three. How do we know that 3 has to be the same as 2? Give it a shot. No idea at all? Hey, Annie. Because 1 and 4 are the same. Why does that mean that 2 and 3 have to be the same? It's a tough question, huh? Because vertical angle theorem, right, we can prove it. So there must be another reason other than just saying vertical angle theorem. Because before vertical angle theorem, we had it proved this was true, right? What do you know about four and three? What do you know about angle four and angle three? Yeah. They have to because they're a linear pair, right? See how there are two angles that make up a line? And we know what's the linear pair to blue in this diagram. Who goes with blue in this diagram for a linear pair? Green, right? So if I just look at this and I know that, look, these two are a linear pair, blue and green are, that means when I see another blue, green's got to go with it. What do you know about seven? What do you know about seven? Yo. Same as three. How do you know it's the same as three? Two, four, six, and eight are the same. Do you mean that two and four go together because blue and green? And then we have blue and green there. Marissa, do you have something to say? It's okay. 180 with what? What? Seven and three? Oh, because they're both on the same line? That's true, but I bet you wouldn't say that three and five are the same, right? And they're both in the same line. You're on to something there. Seven is on a line with something that we know pairs with it. What other angle does seven pair with? What's seven's linear pair? Yeah, Katie. Eight. Eight. See the line here? Lots of lines, but you're right. Blue and green on this diagram are always a linear pair. They add to 180, right? Have to. 
We knew that from this, right? That's what parallel lines do. Their internal angles always add up to 180. So 7 is the same as 6 because 7 and 8 always go together, right? And 6 and 8 went together, so 7 and 8 should go together. We also know by vertical angles, right? What do you know about 5? Angle 5. Anybody got a hunch about five? It's blue. It's blue. That's the hunch. Who can tell me why? Why is it blue? Because he said. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's the linear pair with six, and blue and green always go together. Give me another reason. That's good. What's the other reason five goes with, or five is the same as eight? Yeah? Why? Yeah. Yeah, they're vertical, right? Vertical angles, right? Scissor theorem or whatever, right? So yeah, one because they're a linear pair, right? They got to go together to make 180. And these already went together to make 180. So these must be the same. In fact, that's the proof of vertical angles theorem right there. Right? And then shortcut, vertical angles, they're the same. So check this out. The same side interior angles, according to Euclid, that's these guys, right? Same side interior they're the same side of the transversal, right? They're both on the right side. Why are they interior? Why would you describe four and six as interior? Yeah. They're inside what? The two parallel lines, yeah. Call them line L, line M. For some reason, they use cursive when they talk about lines. I don't know. Separate them from points that have, you know, regular letters. So four and six are interior. They're same side because they're on the same side of the transversal, right? Transversal is just something that cuts two other lines, okay? And they're always going to be supplementary, add up to 180, if the lines are parallel and vice versa. So if I have two lines in a transversal, and I tell you that this guy and this guy add up to 180, what do you know about line L and line M? They must be what? Parallel, according to Euclid, right? If they weren't, you get a lot of weird math. If I give you two lines that are parallel, what do you know about L and M? Some of their angles, tell me about their angles. If I give you these guys, it means they're parallel. If I say they're parallel, it gives you, what about these two angles? Not that they're the same, but what? Katie? They have to 180. They have to be supplementary. It goes both ways. The symbol for that when it goes both ways is this. Double-sided arrow. The reason we have that is because not always do things go both ways. So if A implies B, that's what this means. See how it happens? Play dumb games, get dumb prizes, right? That's how it works. Play dumb games, you get dumb prizes. You ever heard that expression? I love that expression. But is it also true that that means this? Whoops, did I do that correctly? There we go. Play dumb games, get dumb prizes, true. Get dumb prizes means that you play dumb games. Is that true? When you get dumb prizes, it is, is it always mean that you were playing dumb games? No, sometimes life just sucks, right? Sometimes that happens. However, it is guaranteed the other way around. If you play dumb games, you will get dumb prizes. Right? So not always does it go both ways, but when it does, it's kind of nice. Parallel lines means supplementary angles. Supplementary angles means parallel lines. One begets the other. Let's talk about other different types of angles here, because we have same side interior angles. Let's look at... Let's not use orange. Let's use yellow. What about... Angle 2 and angle 8, are they same side? Yes, they are on the same side of the transversal, so they are same side, same side. 
Are they interior? No, they are not. What are they? How would you describe them? I'll get my hand off here. How would you describe those angles? If they're not interior, what are they? Exterior, right? Who said that one? Marissa. I gotta give you this. He's heating up! Oh no, the thing's not on. Hold on, one second, hold on, one second, one second, one second, one second. I got you. He's heating up! No, I don't. Apparently my speakers are broken. Nope, try it again. He's heating up! Got it. I figured it out. I got it. There you go. They're exterior. Because exterior means what? Very good. On the outside. Names are hard. Same side exterior because they're on the outside. What do you notice about the same side exterior angles? Because here's an example of same side exterior, two and eight. What's another example of same side exterior? Two and eight are same side and exterior. What's another example of same side exterior on this diagram? Yeah. Seven and one are, right? Because they're on the same side, the left side, and they're both exterior. What do you notice about two and eight and seven and one? Are they the same angles, two and eight? No, they're not the same, but they are what? What do we know about them? Two and eight. They're not the same angle, but they are. What's their relationship? I'm so ready to press this button. Katie? Ooh, I know what you mean. They're not, on, they're not on the same line right next to each other. Common mistake. Usually we save that for linear pair, but what did you mean? They both must be what? Two and eight must add up to what? Thank you very much. All right. Three answers in a row and you get the, she's on fire. What about one and seven? Same thing, right? They're both supplementary as well. So it turns out same side exterior angles, when these are parallel, right? When they're not parallel, it's kind of boring, right? We get something that looks like that, gross. When they're parallel, they're gonna be supplementary. Same side interior will also be supplementary. How would you describe these angles? That's pink. That's pink. How would you describe three and six? What kind of angles are those? Are they same side? No, what are they? Really? How would you describe that? Yeah, opposite side. That's a really good way to describe it. And that's how I want to say it all the time. For some reason, and the reason I'm teaching this is so that when you, when you hear this, you'll know what it means, right? You can call it whatever you want. They call them alternate, because they alternate. They go back and forth, left side, right side, right? They switch. They call them alternate. But opposite sides works for me. Are they interior or exterior? Xi'an, you know? No. Yeah. Interior. interior. Why are they interior? Interior means inside. They're inside the parallels, right? So you can either be inside the parallels or outside the parallels. You can either be on the same side or on alternate, opposite sides, right? Those are our options. So these are alternate interior angles. What do you notice about the alternate interior angles? What's the relationship between three and six? Are they supplementary? Are they what? What are they? They're the same, they're congruent, right? Alternate interior angles are the same. We're gonna be using that a lot this year. Corinne can tell you about that. Alternate interior angles are gonna be the same. We're gonna use that all the time. Notice four and five are also congruent, right? This is really powerful. So we've talked about alternate interior, we've talked about same side exterior, we've talked about same side and interior. So check it out, what might we be missing? Same side interior, same side exterior. Alternate interior, what are we missing? Yo! All right, the theory is that there exist alternate exterior angles. So far our studies have not shown that they do exist, but we, we theorize that they do. If they did exist, what would they be on this diagram? alternate and exterior. There you go, Katie. Katie needs some glasses. Ask Biebs for some. What? One in five. Why one in five? 
Why are they alternate? Why are they exterior? Okay, outside of the parallel lines. You sure about that? Anyone want to disagree? Katie, I believe in you, and I think I know what you're thinking, but I want to show you through this. What do you have to say? Oh, oh nothing. She dropped out. Go. <laughs> Five is inside, isn't it? It's inside the parallels. Are you seeing it now? That's a five. You got Biebs on speed dial, right? Biebs, I need to come to Canada. I need health care. Alternate exterior. Give me an example. Alternate exterior. They're on. One and eight. Why are one and eight alternate and exterior? Why are they alternate? I love the miming. It's great. Good. They're on different sides of the transversal, right? One's on the left side, one's on the right side. You digging? It's confusing because you're like, oh, look, they're the five, three and five are, are on the same side because they're both inside or something, right? You know what I mean? Like, it can get weird like that. Same side of the, or opposite sides of the transversal. That's what alternate means. Either on the left side or the right side, okay? Why are they exterior and not interior? Why would you call these exterior? Annie, you have something to say? No? Yeah? They're outside of what lines? The parallel lines. So they're outside of the parallels, so we call them exterior. When they're inside the parallels, we call them interior, right? Like these guys. When they're on opposite sides of the transversal, we call them alternate, right? When they're on the same side of the transversal, we call them same side. So alternate exterior angles, alternate opposite sides on the exterior. One and eight. What's another example of alternate exterior angles? Opposite sides of the transversal, outside the parallels. Yeah. Two and seven would also be alternate exterior. Opposite sides, right? And maybe you like opposite sides better than alternate, right? Opposite sides on the exterior. What do you notice about alternate interior angles? Or sorry, alternate exterior angles. What do you notice about those? What's their relationship? One and eight and two and seven. What's their relationship? One and eight, two and seven. Both are alternate exterior, right? One and eight. What's true about alternate exterior angles? They're always what? Yeah. Right, you're giving me the definition again. I figured you guys would be confused about that, right? I'm asking, what's true about alternate exterior angles? Well, they're always opposite sides and they're always on the exterior. Yes, that's the definition. What you're saying is true. What else do we know? What else do you notice about alternate exterior angles? Here's an example. Here's another example. What do you see, Lottie? Yeah. They're the same. They're congruent. So it looks like alternate angles, both the exterior and the interior, are congruent, right? Right? Same side seem to be supplementary. These two are same side interior. They're supplementary. These two are same side exterior. They're supplementary. Something to point out. You don't have to memorize that. When I say same side exterior and stuff like that, I'd like you to know what I'm talking about, right? But we're going to get used to that over the next couple of days. There's some really interesting properties with these angles that help you figure out a lot of cool things. Got this crazy diagram here, matching up different things. We'll talk about that later. Parallel lines. They're going to be a thing we talk about a lot in here. Parallel lines are very nice because you get a lot of free information. Just because those two are parallel, we were able to map up that those are the same and those are the same. And more information is better because the more information you have, the easier it is to solve a problem. Okay? Y'all tired? Freshman, you got a lot of homework recently? Some of y'all sent me emails saying you did. What happened? What is it? What class? Every. Every class. So what's the deal with that? Is it just transitioning to high school or is it Corona? Not sure. Not sure. Marissa, the freshmen being babies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See you later.
I don't know. I've got a million people showing up Friday to do stuff after school. We can do that, but I can't guarantee when I'd be able to get you in. It could be anywhere um, between two and four. I have to work. Okay. I need you to send me an email about when you can, okay? Okay. Okay? Are you going to be all right? I'm just trying. I know you are, but you're going to be okay? You promise? Okay. We should talk sometime. We should. What lunch do you have? I have B lunch too. Just saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe we work something out. Right? Mm -hmm. Later. Take care. Get some sleep. I will try. That's hey, hard. I, I know. Right. As long as you enjoy that. Yeah. Sorry. Hello, Rowan. Today's an exciting day, kids. We're going to be talking about the fifth postulate. Much like the fifth element, it is often forgotten about and underrated. But no, I think in my portfolio, I totally forgot about it. Yeah, I know. You and everybody else. I don't know. I literally, I was working on it like Friday night. I was getting ready for it. Not Friday night. Like Tuesday night, mm -hmm. and I was ready for it, and I just totally forgot about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when I said mm -hmm, mm -hmm, doesn't mean I don't believe you. It's no. that like um, no, 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 I, no, 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 no. I, I, I just want to make this clear because a lot of, you know, I, I, a lot of teachers will be like, oh yeah, whatever, I don't care, you know, excuses. I do it the other way. I say I don't care. I'm sure you had a valid reason. I assume everybody does. It makes my life a lot easier. I Gotcha. Well, let's get it done. I've got a million people showing up Friday after school online to do it because they had the same situation as you. Was I right that you guys have more homework this week than you expected? Or am I wrong? I feel like some of you guys are just being a little bit vague. But that's okay. I can come in and come back to school without so much. Yeah, so which is why we need to make sure during school we get stuff d -d 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 done. So like yesterday, all day, you know what I mean? Smell them stepping in here. That's very nice. Right. The parallel postulate. That's what we're talking about today. Possibly the most famous of all Euclid's postulates. There weren't many, right? The more postulates I have, the less likely your math can be accurate, right? I have 100 postulates, well. Don't you need this today? Okay. Oh, hi, Geneva. Speaking of online, this is the last week we're going to be using YouTube. We're going to switch over to Google Meets now. They updated a couple with a couple features, and it seems usable enough. Hey, this is Mac. Guess what? What? I got Discord. Oh, Brad. It okay. Works. But I don't know anybody who acts, so I can't. Gotcha. I I'll will. S I'll right. send you the deets, man. Are you an Among Us fan? Do you play Among Us a yes, lot? Yes, I, I have it on my phone. We gotta join for Game Club. You play Among Us at all? Oh, girl, you gotta I, get into it. I've been grinding that game. You I am a master. No, I am so I, good. I am I'm so, so good. good at the imposter, you don't even know. All right. Um, Carter, I don't see you. Joshua, I don't see you. Rowan, I see you. Max, I do not see you yet. Um, I don't see Cliff. I don't see Nevaeh yet. Bell just rang, so again, yeah, no big deal. Uh, Adam, Adam, um, don't see Adam, and I don't see Stephen yet. But again, Bell just rang. Bell just rang. Um, I do see Lindsay. I do see Geneva. I do see Rowan. We should play tonight uh, if I can. I don't know. I've got a bunch of meetings after school, and then I get meet with a bunch of kids that didn't meet with me yesterday like they were supposed to, because I'm a merciful God. All right. So um, today two kids in class. We're going to be talking about the parallel postulate. Uh, I feel like I need to introduce it with a little bit of this. Right. The most famous of all. Hi, Carter. Hi, Adam. Uh, the most famous of all Euclid's postulates. Um, and the reason Euclid matters is he's kind of like the father of geometry. He's this Greek dude. Hey, Stephen. Um, and the parallel postulate defines parallel lines, essentially, right? So what do you know about parallel lines, two kids in class? What do you know about parallel lines? The Robin Thicke song, exactly. 
Other than that, what do you know? They don't cross. They don't cross. So like these look parallel enough, huh? This line right here and this line right here. What do you want to name them? L and M, great choice. We use cursive letters to mark, par uh, to mark lines. And that's because points are usually done with like print letters, right? Regular letters. Um, so this is line L and line M. And they have so much in common, but they'll never meet. Isn't that just like a tragedy? Right? That's a math joke. Son of a gun, dude. I know, right? They're never going to meet, but they have so much in common. This is this is a rom-com, but focus on like... Little 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 Boo! Anyway, so we've got L and M, and they're parallel. But how do we check for that? Imagine real life. How would you check to make sure two lines are parallel, meaning they'll never intersect? How would you do it? Keep going. You what? Just keep going. But like, how would you check to make sure that they didn't? You'd like just measure them constantly forever? Because yeah. that's not a very good idea for real life. Well, you can tell they don't turn or anything. How do you know? Because it shows us. What do you mean? Because it looks like it, but how do you know it's perfect? Because it's an arrow. Well, they could go on forever and still intersect, right? Here's a line. Goes on forever. Here's another line that goes on forever. Orange kills me. Right? Those cross. See, I'd worry about you playing that game in my class, but I know you're so bad at it, you're going to be dead most of the time. No, no, no. So, how do we know that they're never going to intersect? How would we check it in real life? Right, this is imaginary land, they go on forever, but how would you check it in real life? Like, how do you make train tracks parallel? How do you, how do you make sure? What would you do? Just line them up. Line them up. What do you mean by line them up? I love this. Everybody's doing this gesture today. It's like we're, we're miming our answers only. Should do that. Well, no. Technically, train tracks do cross. They cross other train tracks, but not themselves. Oh, right. Like, when you're skating, like, there's this move you can do where you, like, do your legs in and out. You ever seen somebody do it, like, rollerblades or whatever? Yeah. That is not what tra train tracks do, just to be clear. Okay? That would not end well. <laughs> That'd be funny right? to watch. <laughs> the right side of the train is now on the left side, and the left side of the train is now on the right side. What could go wrong? What could go wrong in that? The entire body would be like flipping in and out, inverting on the vertical axis. So, actually, be the horizontal. How do you check? You need to measure them some way, right? There must be some way to measure them. Uh, what do you want to name him? What's his name? Tim. Tim? Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw. Does he still do country music? I don't even know who that is. Okay, Tim McGraw is a pretty big deal. How about you, country gal? Tim McGraw? Yeah? Tim McGraw's good. He's married to Faith Hill, right? Oh my god, this guy's going on a ring. What's his name? Jim. Jim. Tim and Jim. Great, fantastic. We won't get that confused at all. Tim and Jim. Jim's the one that leans. Someone called me. They're trying to figure out what height, Literally. if they're the same height or not. And Tim and Jim, but say, yep, we're the same height. Oh, shut Do you have a problem with that? No. Why not? Ooh, he's at an angle. Ding, 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 ding. Word of the day, word of the day. So he's at an angle. I mean, but so is he, too, right? Ooh, Geneva's got an answer. You can measure the distance between the two lines in two spots and see if it's the same. Look at this girl. Knocking him down from home. Yeah. I feel like I got to give you this. He's heating up. All right, so. If we measure between here and here, and here and here, and those lengths are the same, then we know that they're parallel. Yeah. Nice job, Geneva. Oh, so they figure out the train tracks. Now, how do we measure something in real life? Well, we get a ruler, right? And when we measure something, what do we need to do to make sure that it's measured correctly? Because this is not measured correctly. They're not the same height. Something about an angle? Tell me. Let's go. Let's go. An angle on how? What angle? You just... How do we make sure we're measuring correctly? Just measure the torso. What? <laughs> we're going to break this kid up into different parts and be like, yep, torsos match up. Yep, we're good to go. Keep going, keep going. Oh, your torso's bigger than him, right? Yes. You'd be Michael Phelps. What if your torso's huge and your legs are real little? Yeah. Yeah? Some people get all the luck with heart disease. You know what I mean? They get the Marfans, right? Oh, I'm real tall the rest of my life. Oh, no. Oh, no. The rest of, again, if you happen to have a heart disease, right? Marfans is probably the one you want. Um, other of us, Get the short end of the stick, no pun intended. How do we make sure we're measuring correctly? Because Geneva's right. We need to measure in two different spots, and if it's the same, then we win, right? 
Right? Why did I draw these lines like this and not like that? Because I'd have a situation like this, right? And that's not measuring correctly. How do you measure correctly? Ruler. Yeah, but what do you do with that ruler? Because I could measure like this with a ruler. Put it on the line. Put it on the line? What do you mean? You put it on the line. You, you, you put it on the line. Here's the line. You put it on the line. Here's the line. You put the ruler on the line. So measure it. How would you do it? So here, here's a line I want to measure. What would I? Well, here's a line. How would I measure it? Where would I put the ruler? Up, up. Up, up? Like this? No, no, no. Side diagonal. Ah, like that. I put it right alongside it and we compare them, right? That's true. That's true. How do I measure people? Their height. Here's the ground, by the way. Maybe that would help. That dude's tipped. He's like he's leaning. He's tripping. You guys ever seen that rom com? It's an old one. There's this there's this scene where this guy, he's like hitting on this girl right there, like will they, won't they, will they? We're like, oh, we're waiting, right? And he's in there and he kinda leans in a little bit, right? And this guy passed by in the hallway, he's like, Hey, this guy bothering you? Cause he's looks to me like he's leaning. And this becomes a very famous line in this movie. I forget what the movie is. He's leaning. That's Jim's problem. We need him not to lean. How do we tell him not to lean? How do we define standing up straight, gentlemen? And housing gay. Just stand up straight. How do you do that? Look at this guy. Tell him to stand up. How, how do you tell him to stand up straight? Well, you tell him to stand up straight. Well, how do you measure it? You measure it. You can't do that. Because you might be a hunchback. This is true. I'm going to tell you Jim is not. Jim does not need to see a chiropractor. He's all good. Straight, how do we, how do you define straight? Up and down. Only up and down, no left and right. So just up and down. So if I were to draw something straight, it would have to be just 100% up and down. So that line's straight. You mentioned something about an angle. That dude's killer, he's the killer. 180 degree angle? Red is sus. So 180 degrees is here to here. This line, would you say it's straight? Yeah? It's 180. Sure, 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 sure. Isn't he 180? We need to compare him to something, don't we? Because as soon as I turn this, this guy's standing up straight, but this guy isn't, right? Jim's got scoliosis. No, we already said he doesn't. He doesn't need to see a chiropractor. That's been the joke every hour. You guys are terrible people. He's just leaning. Okay, I'm going with the rom-com angle. Going with the angle, ha. Huh. You like that, rom-com angle? Rom-com angle. What's the first? Come on, kids, you guys act like you're all smart and then I ask you a simple question, what does it mean to stand up straight and you can't define it? How about this? Am I standing up straight or am I not? Not now. I'm not, how do you know? Maybe. How do you know I'm leaning? This is your point. Side. But what if the floor, you can't see the floor. What if the floor is going like this? It's not. It's not? No, because I can see it's not. Ah! <laughs> you need to be able to see the floor. And you're comparing the floor, maybe like the, the bottom of this frame, right? Maybe my camera sideways, but in general, right? You're comparing me to the frame. How do we know he's standing up straight? Whoops. How do we know? Nope. How do we know he's standing up straight, but this guy isn't? It has to do with the angle. What angle? Black ground. The angle between him and the ground, what is it? 45. 45? What's a 45 degree angle look like? Yes. You guys don't know anything, do you? Yeah, no, it's, a, it's not a 90. Why is it not 90? Because it's a weight. It's a 90 degree like this. Ooh, like this. So this is a 90. Yeah. Would you say that line's straight? Yes. What about this? It appears to be straight. Yeah. So we have to measure at a 90 degree angle. He's not a 90 degree. He's measuring at some kind of rom-com angle. Less than 90, right? But if you were to stand up, then he'd be 90 degrees just like his friend Tim. 90 degrees to the floor, right? That's how we measure. So when we do Geneva's measuring method, we need to measure both of these at 90 degrees. And if they're the same, we're good to go. Question.
Jim and Tim are down here now. Are they the same height? Yes or no? How do you know? Are they the same height now? No. No? no. Why not? The one on my right. Okay, my drawing's not perfect. But they're pretty close, right? Okay, okay. We're going to call that being the same height. But wait a minute. Are they 90 degrees to the floor, if this is the floor? This ain't 90 degrees, right? But they are the same angle. So I've got a question for you. 90 degrees is what makes these parallel, right? 90 degrees in the same between here and here, right? That's what we said. But what about these two lines? Are they not parallel? No, they are. But that's not 90 degrees. Nope. Also, what about this? Here's our measurement line, right? And I'm going to tell you it's 90 degrees to the original line. Is the next line I draw going to be parallel? Can't tell you, can you? Because what if this happens? It's not 90 degrees there. Well, they aren't parallel either. So in order to be parallel, it doesn't just have to have 90 at the bottom. And it doesn't just have to always be 90, right? Because these are parallel. What does it have to be? Well, Euclid defines this. And this is a controversial postulate. It's one of those things. Again, it's a postulate. We can't prove it. So there's two options. Either parallel lines have this property or they don't. And Euclid's geometry assumes that they do that you can define them like this. Parallel lines always have their interior angles be supplementary. What does it mean to be supplementary? Do you remember? Supplementary, complementary means, or, or, or congruent means they're the same. Supplementary, complementary, remember those at all about angles? Learn about those? Supplementary is when they add up to 180. And complementary is 90. The reason we have a name for that is because it's really important. If angles add up to 180, you get some really cool properties. Same thing with 90, if they add up to 90. So instead of saying they add up to 180 all the time, they just said, look, they're supplementary, right? I don't know. You'll catch on. Euclid says, here's his postulate. If two lines' interior angles, when you draw another line through them, are supplementary, they add up to 180, then those two lines must be parallel. And he uses this little symbol to mark for parallel, two little colored in arrows. So it has to do with the internal angles here and here. And you'll notice from Geneva's method, do these add up to 180? Yes, they do, right? It's nice when they're all 90, right? Because that makes them very, you know, level and all that stuff. But they don't have to be. It's, as long as they add up to 180, they're going to be parallel. And this is kind of cool. So Euclid says this, he says, if two lines have interior angles with a transversal. Transversal is just a name for a line that cuts two others. So see how this line cuts the two other lines? It's a transversal. See how this line cuts the two other lines? It's a transversal. See how this line cuts these two lines? Line L cuts these two lines? It's a transversal. Any line that cuts two lines is a transversal. That is a transversal of these guys. All three are transversals, because all three of them are going to cut two lines, right? Or each one is going to cut another two, right? So if two lines have interior angles with a transversal that are supplementary, then those lines are parallel. Well, if-then statement. 
The symbol for this is that, implies. This implies that. A implies B. An example of that might be you play dumb games, you get dumb prizes. You ever hear that one? Skylar, you ever heard that one? You play dumb games, you get dumb prizes? Right? This implies. That's what that says. If you play dumb games, it implies that you're going to end up with dumb prizes. Now, this doesn't always work both ways. Right? Going from A to B, play dumb games, get dumb prizes. That's always true. You get dumb prizes, it means you played dumb games. You know what that expression is talking about, right? You do stupid things, you get stupid results, right? If you do stupid things, you get stupid results. If you got stupid results, does that mean you did stupid things? Sometimes, but not always, right? Like, sometimes life just sucks, right? Sometimes crap happens and it's not your fault. Now, if you're doing dumb things, you will get dumb prizes. No doubt about that. But not always does it work both ways. When it does, we use this symbol right here. This is a both ways proof, a both ways idea. If two lines have interior angles of the transversal are supplementary, blah, 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 blah. If these guys add up to 180, is what they're saying, then the lines are parallel. Ding, 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 ding. But I'm telling you it goes both ways. If the lines are parallel, then their insides will add up to 180. So let's explore what this postulate implies. It gives us a lot of interesting things going on here. So parallel lines never touch. And the way we know they never touch is because their interior angles add up to 180. Sometimes they're both 90, sometimes they're 120 and 60, doesn't matter. So here's some parallel lines. And we know they're parallel. Let's call that T for transversal, L and M for the lines. And we know they're parallel because if I tell you that this angle right here and this angle right here, the interior angles, add up to 180, then according to Euclid's postulate, the fifth postulate, we know that these two lines are parallel. So therefore, L is parallel to M. We cool with that? And it works both ways. We could flip that arrow around. If I were to tell you L and M are parallel, if I did a little symbol like this, then you would know automatically that those two angles are supplementary. Maybe they're 90 and 90, maybe they're 120 and something else, I don't know. That's how it's gonna work. Hmm, let's do this. I like using L and M and T for transversal. L for line, M for the letter after line, T for transversal. And I'm gonna tell you through this little symbol right here that these two are parallel. So we know L is parallel to M. Let's label some angles. Got yeah, pens all over the place. I'm gonna use numbers just to make it quick so we don't have to use letters, because I'd have to do a lot of letters. Eight angles, I see. Maddie, if L and M are parallel, what does that tell us about four and six? They have to be 180, they have to be supplementary, right? So angle four, whatever it is, and angle six, they sum to 180. They're supplementary. Cool. Knowing that, what else do we know about the other angles? Three and five must also equal 180. That's true. That's true. I don't know what color they are yet. But that's also true. What do you know about angle one? Why are one and seven 180? You're right. It's kind of a couple steps to get there, but you're right. You're absolutely right. Let's focus on three. Because you said three and five are the same. Or uh, they add to 180, right? What do you know about three and four? What do you know about angle three and angle four? People online, you're more than welcome to participate. I know the people here are a little bit faster. What? 
What do you know about angle three and angle four? They're right next to each other. They're right next to each other. They're kind of a pair, aren't they? A pair on a line. We call that a linear pair. A linear pair is two angles that make up a line. So what do you know about three and four? They also have to be 180, don't they? So three and four are 180. Because they're a linear pair. And we know a line is always 180 degrees, right? Angle addition postulate says even if you have a if you have an angle and you cut it, it's still gonna be the same after you're done, right? So it was originally 180, and then I drew this transversal, they're still gonna add up to 180, right? I don't know if they're 90 and 90, 180, um, 60 and 120, I don't know. But I do know they add up to 180. Now here's the thing. I know what color this 4 is. It's green, don't I? If 4 and 6 add up to 180, and 3 and 4 add up to 180, what do you know about angle 3? What do you know about angle 3? What must be true about it? I'm going to say that again. 4 and 6 add to 180. And 3 and 4 add to 180. So what do you know about angle 3? So it's equal to 180. That 3 is equal to 180? Yeah. That's a 180 degree angle right there? No. Like, what are you saying? Like, like, 3 and 4 add up to 180, right? We know that because they're on a line. You said that, right? Linear pair. We know 4 and 6 are because these are parallel, right? That's the definition of parallel. The internal angles will add up to 180. So we know this, and we know that. Three and one. What about three and one? Three and one must be because they're a linear pair. What do you know about angle one? Why do you know it's the same as four? They're across from each other. This is an X, right? You guys remember vertical angle theorem, right? The vertical angles, let me turn it. The vertical angles are always congruent in an X. And we had a proof for that, actually. So if 4 and 1 are the same, what does that tell you about 3? three. By vertical angles, right? So they're going to be the same. What color should I color 3 and 2? Why? Gotcha. If I know 1 and 4 are the same, and I know 2 and 3 are the same, what do I know about the relationship between 3 and 4? They're 180, right? 360. 360 all the way around, that's true. So if I've got 360 all the way around and I subtract these two guys, what's left over has to be evenly split between these two, right? Sure. These two have to be equal. You said 3 and 4 add up to 180, yeah? And 1 and 2 add up to 180. 3 and 2 are the same. That's cool. But what about 4 and 6? Don't they also add to 180? Think about this. If 4 is, let's say, 40 degrees, okay? Then 3 has to be what? I'll, I'll make it easier. If 4 is, um, let's do 160 degrees, what's 3 got to be? 20, right? If 4 is 160 degrees, what's 6 got to be? Because they both add up to 180, right? And these both add up to 180, so 3 and 6 must have to be the same. They got to be, right? There's no other number other than 20 that gets you to 180. If these got to be to 180 and these got to be to 180, well, 3 and 6 got to be the same number, right? And 2 and 3 are the same because of vertical. But not just vertical, but look. If 3 and 4 add to 180, blue and green add to 180, and I say green and this guy added to 180, you know that guy's blue, right? You smell what I'm stepping Green and blue make 180 here. And if I know that's green, and this guy, whatever he is, has to add to 180, well, green and blue always are the ones that make 180. They're the linear pair, right? They go together. They're supplementary. Green and blue are supplementary. And I say green and this guy are supplementary. Well, he must be blue as well, right? If this guy's blue, what do you know about 5, 6, 7, 8? 6 and 7, six and seven are the same because of vertical angle theorem. Good. Five and, five and 8 are the same. Do I know that 5 and 8 are green? Yeah. I know they're the same, but do I know that 5 is the same as 1? Yeah. How do I know that? Because they're on the same line, well, well the same, if you move that line up, they're the same. Ooh, line. we can slide it up on over. That's interesting. But why does that prove it? What if it just looks like it would slide perfectly into place? Well, it depends on the same spot. I, I don't 
That's okay. It's okay to not know. How do five and seven relate? They're supplementary, exactly. And if seven and three are the same, right? Blue and green are the only numbers that add up to 180, right? If you have a blue, the other number must be a green. Has to be. That's the only way you're going to get 180. If blue is 10, then this guy has to be 170. If blue is 10, then this guy has to be 170. You see what I'm saying? If these are the same, then these must be. So five and one are also the same. And then five and eight are by vertical, yeah? We know that five and eight are the same for a couple reasons. One, blue and green always go together in this diagram, right? We know that, 180. Well, don't I have a blue here? So that means green must go there. If this is green, don't I know that's blue, right? So just from having parallel lines, we get all this information for free. And what's cool is not only do these guys match, which is vertical, that's old news, but that they jump across the pond kind of, and these guys will match as well. Let's talk about what these kind of angles are. Using numbers is fine and everything. I told you earlier we had some interior angles, right? Four and six are interior because they're on the inside of the parallels. And if they're supplementary, which I said they were, then that means the lines are parallel. So we've got interior angles here, these two right here. I'm using colors not to say they're the same, but to say that they're the same kind of angle, right? They're not congruent. They have different values, right? We said purple and blue, or, uh, uh, green and blue, right? But they're both pink because they're both interior angles. They're inside the parallels. Now here's a problem. Aren't three and six interior as well? But how are three and six different than four and six? Three and six are on opposite sides. That's what you're trying to say, right? Because they're technically all on the same line, right? Yeah, I was getting to that point. Eventually. Yeah. So four and six, how would you describe them? They're interior, but they're also what? The same, same angle. No, they're not. They're blue and green. They had to 180, but they could be different, right? 180. Oh, yeah. So how would you describe them? They're interior, but also how do you se how do you separate them from three and six, right? Because three and six are also interior. We need another word to describe them. How is three and six different from four and six? There's a word for it. There is. I don't know what it is. Did it last year? Oh, stop trying to think back to last year. Invent your own words. Three and six versus four and six. What's the difference there? Three and six are equal. That's true. What about their location? Let's talk about that. Angle. Ooh, yeah, they're uh, diagonal from each other. What's another word for that? Across. Give me another word. Anything any others? Opposite. The word that they use in math land, and the only reason I'm telling you is you can use any of those words. I understand what they mean. The only reason I'm going to tell you to use this one is so that you know what it is. Different sides of the line. Exactly, right. All those are true. I don't care how you describe them. That's fine. I just want you to know that when they say alternate, it means they alternate, right? Opposite side. So alternate is uh, here and here. It's three and six. That's not what four and six are, right? They're same side. Are you digging that? Alternates opposite sides, right? All those things. Four and six are same side. That means four and five are alternate. Four and five are alternate. That's true. Give me another set of same side interior. Four and six are. Three and five also are, right? They're inside the parallel, so interior. And they're on the same side of the transversal, right? Does that mean seven and two are alternate? Seven and two are alternate. They are on opposite sides. So seven and two, let's talk about them. Let's use purple for them. Seven and two. They are, they're equal. Um, seven and two are alternate. I think we agree about that, right? They're on opposite sides of the transversal. Are they on the same side of the, I'm sorry, they're opposite sides of the transversal. Are they inside or outside angles? Interior or what? Exterior. They're exterior. See how they're on the outside of the parallels? So interior, exterior has to do with how they are in relation to the parallels, right? In or out. Whereas same side or alternate has to do with which side they're on for the transversal. So alternate exterior angles is what those purple angles are. Two and seven are an example. What's another example of alternate exterior angles? One and eight. One and eight, right? What do you notice about alternate exterior? You said they're equal, right? Alternate exterior will always be equal. Alternate interior will never be equal. Ooh, alternate interior. We haven't talked about that yet. 
I'll use red. Alternate interior. What would alternate interior look like? If they exist. I think you're using logic to say, look, if we have alternate exterior, we must have alternate interior. Give me an example of alternate interior. Three and six. Three and six. And four and five. And four and five, right? Three and six are alternate interior. What do you notice about three and six? Across from each other. They're alternate. We already said that. What do you notice about three and six? Three and six? They are, which means they must be congruent, right? We proved that earlier. Alternate interior are always the same. Alternate exterior are always the same. Same side interior are supplementary, right? They're not, well, they could be, right? They could be 90 and 90, right? But they are supplementary. We know that, right? You dig? So we've covered alternate exterior, we've covered alternate interior, we've covered same side interior. What what are we missing? Opposite side interior. Yes, opposite side interior. In other words, alternate interior, right? I'll do dark blue. Alternate interior. Maddie, based on these definitions for alternate and interior, what would be an example of alternate anterior angles? Three and five are alternate because what? Wait, what? Okay, so we have two options, three and five and four and five. What do three and five and four and five both have in common? Are they, what, I mean, there's two things they have to fit, right? Which one are you sure about? Which one are you confused about? Three and six are alternate in their interior, yep. And we're looking for alternate and interior. Wait, we already did alternate interior. What are we doing here? We're doing out. We want same side. Why did I write that? I'm the dummy here. I'm the dummy. Sometimes that happens, guys. Yeah, same side interior. Give me an example of same side interior. Three and five. Three and five are on the same side. You were anticipating my question. Good job. Three and five are on the same side, right? Left side versus right side. And they're both inside the parallels. So yeah, three and five. Notice that same side interior are supplementary. Same, uh, wait, I already did same side interior. What are we doing here? Which one are we missing? Did I follow you and you led me astray? Because I asked you which ones we're missing. So we, it's same side something, right? We've already done both alternates. Exterior. It's same side exterior. I don't know. I just had something that you went with. I did. I need to stop right. trusting you. I was on a mission. Yeah, this guy's leading me astray. So same side exterior. Skylar, your turn now. Maddie suffered enough because of you. You can suffer for your own sake. Same side exterior, give me an example. Four and six. Four and six. They are the same side, but are they exterior? No. What are they? Interior. They're same side interior. You need to get off that. You're, you're leading me astray. Same side exterior. Oh, shit. Two and eight. Two and eight. They're the same side. They're both on the right, and they're both exterior. So same side exterior, two and eight. And notice that they're supplementary. What? Okay. Same side exterior, supplementary. Same side interior, supplementary. The same time in the same side interior, or what would be four, like if I say, like six and eight? Hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. You're talking about what? Six and eight. Six and eight. These two right here, linear pair. Oh. See how they're a linear pair? Oh, okay. Good question. I got you. Linear pair, always supplementary, right? They make up a line. What about, let me label these a little bit better. This is two, right? What about these ones? I'm running out of colors here. What about two and six? Are they interior or exterior? None. Yes, <laughs> is your response, yes. Are they same side or opposite side? Same. Same side, so they're definitely same side, right? But we don't know whether we call them interior or exterior. We give them a special name, we call them corresponding. That's what it is. It's not tip my tongue. And the reason they call them corresponding is because if you look, we have two intersections, right? We have intersection one and we have intersection two. Do you see how two and six are both the top right corner of their intersections? They correspond, they go together. One and five correspond because they're both top left. Three and seven both correspond because they're both bottom left. Four and eight both correspond because they're both bottom right. What do you notice about corresponding angles? 
Yep, I mean, that's their definition, right? Same spot. But what do we know about their measures? They're the same. Corresponding angles will always be the same if the lines are parallel. Again, just from the lines being parallel, we get all this information. That's why parallel lines are great because more information makes easier problem solving. So let's write down what we know because this is kind of a mess, right? Wait, so what was, what was like one and six mean? One and six? Great question. One and six, what would you call those? Non corresponding. Yeah. Makes sense to me, non corresponding. They are supplementary. You can call them that. Because, right, they're not same side interior. No. They're not same side exterior. They're not alternate exterior, right? We have, we have an inside and an outside here. So it must have to do some a different name. Corresponding is when they're both on the same side. Non corresponding might be this. Okay. All right, let's talk about what we know. If the lines are parallel, I'm going to say that they are. Do a little arrow. Parallel. There's our transversal. We know these two. Let me use green and blue. These two angles have to be what? If they're parallel. Interior. They're both interior. Very good. So let's talk about how interior. Same side. Same side interior. And what do we know? If these lines are parallel, what's their relationship? Blue and green. Side, yep, that's the definition, but what about their measure? How do they relate? They're not congruent. What are they? Not congruent. They could be. Well, they're not going to be the same. They could be. They could be 90 90. Check this out. 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 These are same side interior. And they're parallel, and they're 90. They could be the same, but we do know one thing about them. They might be the same, but we do know for sure they have to be what? How does Euclid define parallel lines? The same side interior have to be what? Nope, because those are parallel and they're not necessarily the same. Have to add up to 180, that'd be supplementary, right? The same side interior, supplementary. What about same side exterior angles? That'd be the top right. Same side exterior. Are they going to be supplementary or congruent? Supplementary. What about, we've done both same sides, now we go into alternate. Let's do alternate, what do you want to do? Interior or exterior first? Uh, interior. Interior, we'll keep it, we'll keep it real. Alternate interior. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What are examples of alternate interior? Three and six. Will they always be the same or supplementary? They'll be the same, won't they? How do I know that? Because I know these add up to 180, blue and green, and this has to add up to 180 as well, so that has to be green. So they're going to be uh, the same, so congruent. What about alternate exterior? What's an example of alternate exterior here? One and eight are alternate and exterior. Alternate because opposite sides, right? Exterior because they're outside. Are they going to be congruent or supplementary? How do we know they're congruent? In fact, what color will these be? Green or blue? How do you know they're blue? <laughs> How do you know they're blue? One, vertical angles. Yep, very good. How do you know eight is also blue? Mm-hmm. It's supplementary to green. Four has to go with the five. Oh, because of alternate interior? Yep, very good. And then vertical, right? Lots of ways to prove that. Nice job. Nice job, both of you. Um, we left out one. So we said congruent for alternate exterior. There's one other set of angles. I mean, there's two. You came up with your own. Corresponding, corresponding baby. So corresponding angles, the weird ones, right? Those are the ones that are in the same spot in the intersection. So give me an example of corresponding angles. Two and six. Two and six. Give me another example. One and five. One and five. Three and seven. Four and eight. Are corresponding angles congruent or supplementary? Two and six. Going to be congruent. I know two is green because why? Uh, because it's vertical. 
Vertical with three, what's the other reason? Supplementary with four, one or supplementary with four, right? How do I know six is green? Again, supplementary here or vertical here. That means seven must be this as well, right? So corresponding will always be congruent. Now, again, all of this is predicated from the fact that these two lines are parallel. If they ain't parallel, that's not gonna happen. Check this out. Two lines not parallel. There's my transversal, okay? Here's corresponding angles. That guy's top right of this intersection, that guy's top right. Are they gonna be the same? No, they're not. Not necessarily, unless you get real lucky. I need you to know these not because I'm gonna give you a definitions quiz, but because I'm gonna be talking about them and you need to know what I'm talking about, okay? Parallel lines give us tons of information, which is nice because it makes problem solving a lot easier. Remember we always have a where are your gods now problem. What does the one colored in arrowhead mean? They're parallel. So L and M are parallel. Agreed? That's what that means. Now why am I using two arrowheads for these ones? They're congruent. Also. congruent? They're parallel as well. No. Why do I use two instead of just one arrowhead? You don't want to get mixed up. Mm -hmm. Because if I use single arrowheads, that would say like L is parallel to N, right? And that ain't true. Let's number these angles and you tell me what you know about them. Do we know any of the measures of these angles? No. We don't, they could be anything. They could all be 90, they could all be whatever, right? But we do know how they relate to each other. Remember, math is all about relationships. So I'm just gonna randomly call one a blue angle. So what does that tell you about other angles? Four is the same. Why is four the same as one? Angle. Vertical angle theorem, right? And then that means 13 and 16. Ooh, hold on a second. You're saying 13 and 16 are both the same or that they're both blue? They're both blue. Ooh, that's an assertion. We know they're both the same because of vertical angle theorem. How do we know they're both blue? That's a couple steps. Let's work our way out. Let's work our way out. He's just taking a hunch. Good, conjectures are good. That's how this stuff is built. You have a conjecture, now we're gonna see if it's true. It's a 50-50 chance. Either is or it is. Yeah, either are or you ain't. I like this guy. All right, so what do you know about two and three? They're the same, right? We're gonna call them green, because why not, right? That means five. How do you know five and eight are blue? Because they're non-corresponding. Non let's, let's take one at a time. We need to take stuff from here and match it up with stuff down here. Okay, one and five. One and five are the same. How do you know that? Because they're going to make 180. Say again? They're going to make 180. They're the same, so they got to make 180? Well, they're the same. I, I know that. You're just talking. All right, what do we know about parallel lines? How does Euclid define them? Parallel lines always have what kind of relationship with a certain pair of angles? He defines parallel lines as parallel if they have this, where they add up to 180, right? Or vice versa. This means if they're 180, then the lines are parallel, right? So these are parallel. So what angles must be supplementary? Focus on one line at a time. One transversal at a time. Four, six. They gotta be supplementary, right? By definition of parallel lines, or Euclid's fifth postulate, right? Okay. Yeah, now we jump the pond. Do you see how that helps? Now we've jumped the pond. Now we're down here. So what, seven? What about it? Yeah, because of? Six. Vertical angles theorem. Because? Well, I know they have to be the same, but how do I know they're blue? See how six and five have to be a linear pair? So they're 180? And I already know that the linear pair with green is blue, right? And there's three and five, too, so, mm -hmm. so three and four are a linear pair. Green and blue are a linear pair. So when I see green down here and I need its linear pair, I know it has to be blue, you dig? And if that's blue, then vertical angles, right? All right, now how do we get over here? Okay. Okay, I'm listening. So this means 
that. So we're going to go with the 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So, I mean, 1 and 9. Are both blue? How do you know that? Now, question. We're focusing on these two, right? Oh, wait. Ignore this. It'll make it easier. I got it. Yeah, go. Two and nine. What about two and nine? Two is green. Yep. So that means that blue. Why is nine blue? Because it's got one. Because that's how Euclid defines parallel lines, right? Interior, same side interior supplementary. And now we get the rest. We're going to talk about this more tomorrow. Bring your A game online. People online, bring your A game when you get here. Take care, everybody. Love you, miss you, bye. Nice job today. Yeah, Mr. Matt. Later. That's for you, bud. Yo. Yeah, it's fourth hour. Yeah, we're going in order. Hey, Demery. Make sure. Make sure what? That's fourth hour. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, guys. Don't sit down yet. Sit down. Hey Jamie, hey Jordan. Today's an exciting day. We're talking about Euclid, Euclid's fifth postulate, your favorite postulate. You probably should be asking the question, well, what are the other four? Depending on who you talk to, there's four, five, or six postulates. I'm of the belief that there are five. I'm not a big fan of the sixth one. I feel like we can prove that. Quite the controversy in mathematics, though. I need the let's get ready to rumble on here. I need that. I need that. Let's get ready to rumble. Uh oh. Dana Lee? Lee here. I know Mitchell's Zach, back. Mitchell's yeah. homesick. Mitchell is not. Mitchell is. Oh, yeah. Sure, he is. I talked to him yesterday. He's like, sorry, I'm. That person I'm talking to. Like, Mitchell? Is that you? Mitchell? Mitchell, why do you sound so bad? He should be back. Like, okay, Dave, go away. Don't catch anything. No, I'm getting computer virus. Go what? I didn't do that. You have to read your mind. Maybe I'll do that. Keep on going. I'm going to read down. Yesterday, is there a change you had to make? Did you decide about grade or no? Oh, no, I don't know. My dog is not like me. Huh. Did you meet with me yesterday? Yeah. Okay, good. I always confuse you. So you're Cooper. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I always confuse you with Kate. Who's the spot that gets hard? You know who you are. Right? So you're Cooper, you Kate. I always goof you guys up in my head at what hour you're in and what hour you're in. You're special like that. Down. Yeah, Cooper, you're good. Oh, I remember what it was. I told you, get out of here. Your stuff's so good, I'm not even going to argue with Brady yet. I gave him that. Get out of here. I'm done. All right. Welcome. Oh. Here you are now, sir. Killing me, Gina. Oh, I'm sorry. Killing me. Oh, I'm sorry. 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 Oh, I'm sor
Oh, sure. Hey, Olivia, hey, Gage. Guys, we're talking about the fifth postulate today, Euclid's fifth. A million points if you can figure out the first to the fourth. My rule is if you're going to play Among Us in class, you have to join Game Club and play with us when we play on Discord. Okay. Because you'll be playing it a lot less in my class if you realize how bad you are at it. And I'll, I'll show you that firsthand. I have no problem with it. No hall today. I don't know, no Jordan. Jamie's online. Jordan's online. Jordan's supposed to be online. I forget, it splits at the L's and she's on the other half of it. No CJ. I don't see any Andrew. I see Demery, I see Olivia, I see Lexi. I see Gage, I see Jamie. Oh, what's up, Mitchell? Hope you're feeling better, bud. Um, but missing Zach from class. Okay. Today, we're talking about the fifth postulate. I need you, like, if we're going to talk about the fifth, fifth postulate, I need you guys to be able to be mature and, like, calm and not, like, too excited about it. I know you've been waiting for this day for a while, and it's finally here. But, like, just be cool. It's just the fifth postulate. Sorry, Mitchell. So the fifth postulate. Euclid only has five, technically six. And the fewer postulates you have, the better your geometry is because fewer leaps of faith you need, right? Euclid's pretty good. Five is a pretty good number for all of the rest of mathematics. And in this postulate, it has to do with parallel lines. And this is a problem that stumped Euclid for a very, very long time to the point where he basically just had to say, look, this is a postulate. All the others, I'm like, look, they're going to be postulates. I understand why. This one he tried for a long time to prove to be a theorem. Couldn't. Still can't to this day. There are two types of geometry, basically. There's Euclidean geometry, which says that, yes, parallel lines are this, which we're going to talk about, right? They do do this. And there's non-Euclidean geometry that said, but what if they didn't? Right? There's always two sides to every coin, right? When you come to a fork in the road, take it. The Euclideans say, okay, it does do this. Let's experiment and see what happens, right? And we had all this mathematics stuff. And the non-Euclideans said, well, let's see what happens if this isn't true, right? Because we don't know whether it is or it isn't. So what happens if it's not? And it turns out it doesn't break math, like the other postulates would. It just gives you really weird math. So what do you know about parallel lines? We're going to talk about Euclidean geometry first. What do you know about parallel lines? Yes, exactly. Robin Thicke, that one song. Don't listen to it. What else do you know? They don't touch. No touching! I need that. I need that. I need that. Oh, there's so many good ideas today. Okay. They don't touch. There's this mathematical joke that these two lines have so much in common, but it's a shame they'll never meet each other. Oh, They belong together. Look how, look how much they have in common. It's funny. Like socks and sandals. So they're parallel. We use L and M usually to denote our lines. That's a cursive M, trust me. Um, and we use cursive because we use points with letter, like regular letters. So we say L and M are parallel. And Euclid says, well, how do I know that they never touch? How do I prove it? And he couldn't. Now imagine in real life, you want to make parallel lines. When might you, when you, when might you want to make parallel lines in real life? When? Train tracks, that's everybody's favorite, right? I always get this. What are parallel lines? This is the first class today that used words instead of miming to tell me what they were. So congrats on that. So we need to make train tracks. How do we make sure they never get closer together or further apart? How do we check that? How do we make sure? Measure what? Put a train on it, see if it works. All right, measure the distance between them. All right, how do we measure? I'm going to tell you a story. What's his name? Collaborative storytelling. We're working together here. What's 
Bob. Okay, Bob and his friend, who's Bob's friend? Billy. Billy. Want to see who's taller? And Billy leans on over. Billy does not need to see a chiropractor. He don't got scoliosis, okay? He's just leaning. He's got a big skull. And Bob says, Billy, I think you're taller than me. And Billy says, nope, we're the same height. What's Billy's problem, other than scoliosis? Why is that not a valid measurement? Yo. He's leaning. You guys ever seen that rom-com? It's not a very famous one. I forget what it is. I should know this. The guy and the girl. It's a rom-com, so it's like, you know, will they, won't they type of thing. A little tension, right? And there's this one scene. He's taking him back to the apartment, right? And they're going to say goodnight. And again, they don't like each other because it's a rom-com. You always start off not liking each other. And you fall in love, right? So anyway, he's there in the apartment saying goodnight. And he leans in a little bit. We'll get to that in a second, Mitchell. And there's this guy that's walking down the hallway. He's like, hey, this guy bothering you? Because it looks like he's leaning. And so whenever someone says leaning, I think of that line. So he's leaning. What do you mean by leaning? Mitchell says, not the same angle. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Same means we're comparing two things, right? So not the same angle to what? Compared to what? What do you mean they're not the same angle? Compared to Billy. Billy and Bob don't have the same angle. What angle does Bob have? You what? It's straight up. What do we mean by straight up? How do we define straight up? Call it Bill's song. Oh, we're miming again. Yeah? Vertical angle. Something like that. Well, vertical angle is this guy, right? This is, that's a, uh, that's this one. I have so many different things now. It's that guy, right? That's vertical angles. Not quite that, right? That's not exactly what you mean. I know what you do mean. I just want you to get, get to, to say it. Words are hard, math is easy. Bob and Billy. Bob's angle is straight up, but Billy's angle isn't. What is a straight up angle? There should be a way to measure that. What's a straight up angle? What makes an angle straight up? I love this. We spent so much time thinking about this in the second hour. First hour zoom by, third hour zoom by. First hour gonna be more like fourth hour or, or vice versa, what's happening? Words are hard. What is an angle that is straight up? How do you define that? Well, a straight angle, not to be confused, is this guy, right? 180. How do you define straight up? Yeah. Yep, vertical, but I need an angle measure. <laughs> He's like, yeah, forget it. 45. 45 degree angle is like this. Is that straight up? I think you're like Billy. Gotta go see the chiropractor. Not 45, but what? Cute. Acute! That's an acute angle. It's less than 90, right? Yeah. 90 degree angle. 90 degree angle looks like this. Is that how we're going to define straight up? 180 degrees rotated. What do you mean by that, Mitchell? Is that how we're going to define straight up? What's Zach short for? Zach Spaniel? Zach Spaniel, welcome. Welcome, Zach Spaniel. Could be Zacchaeus, I've heard. Are you a Zach Spaniel or a Zacchaeus? What? Oh, okay. Zachthaniel, I think, is the, the English version. So 90 degrees, straight up, yes or no? Is that how you want to define it? Sure. Bad influence. Gina, you need better friends. Maddie's a bad influence on you. She's leading you down a dark path. You want to end up like that, Gina? Gina, look at yourself. Do you want to end up like that? Yes. What a compliment. Gina, you are great just the way you are. I know. <laughs> Confidence. Oh, I know. Gina, you look so nice. I know. So sure, 90 degrees is straight up. 
Bob and Billy. Billy ain't 90 degrees. Is Bob 90 degrees? Because you said Bob is straight up. Is Bob 90 degrees? 90 degrees to what? <laughs> what? Why are you miming at me? No gang signs. The ground. Okay, I'll draw on the ground. Are they on grass? That's inappropriate. Um, maybe they're on concrete. That's not like a thing, is it? Man, he's on concrete, right? Okay. So they're on the concrete, and he's 90 degrees to it. Okay, I can dig that. I'm going to color it in so it doesn't look like he's like a third leg. All right, so 90 degrees, but Billy ain't. Billy's leaning. Got some other angle. Okay. So how do we measure the space between here and here? How are we going to do that? Well, we have to measure correctly. So how are we going to do it? Isaiah's looking it up. He's Googling it. Tell us what you find. Isaiah, how are we going to measure between here and here? Do you need more time to Google it? We got to measure 90 degrees, right? Straight up. So how are we going to do that here? How are we going to measure the space between here and here? Because Mitchell says, or who said? Maybe it was Mitchell. Somebody said, as long as we measure between here and here, and the space is the same, we're good to go, right? We know they're parallel. So when we're going to measure between here and here, we don't want to measure in an angle. We want to measure straight up. So how are we going to do that? How do we do it? With a ruler. With a ruler? And how am I going to put my ruler? Like this, like this, like this? What are we doing? Straight up. In other words... 90 degrees to the ground, right? Ground. Well, this was the ground earlier, and it's kind of a metaphor, right? So when we're going to measure, we want to measure from here to here at 90 degrees, right? If we measured like this, our measurement would be off, correct? Okay. And if the measurement between here and here is the same here, then we win, right? They're parallel. I offer you a counterexample. Here's a line. And here's how far apart the other line is from it. Okay? You dig? That's how far it is apart. Before I draw the other line in, will the next line be parallel or no? You say no. How do you know it's not going to be parallel? You don't. Well, the measurement's the same. I'm going to tell you it's this much. Right here. Why not draw it straight? We keep using these words. You don't know. Right, I could draw it like this, right? So it's not enough for this just to be 90. What else must be 90? Both, Both sides. And then we can compare and we're good to go, right? Because in theory, I could have this be 90 and this be 90, but the angle's different here. Right, and the measurements be the same. We could we could do all kinds of weird things. You get curves. Okay. So they're parallel if this and this is 90 and they're the same distance apart. Right? What about this? Can two lines be parallel? And I think you would agree they look like they are. If instead of measuring straight up, 90 degrees, I instead measure like this. Now these are not 90, right? This angle right here and this angle right here are clearly not 90. Hey CJ, does that mean these lines can't be parallel? They could be, right? What does it look like the relationship between these two angles is? It doesn't look like they're the same, but what does it look like the relationship is? I'm using these little symbols to say that the lines are parallel. Little arrowheads, yeah. Looks like they both are. It does, doesn't it? Now that's a conjecture. We haven't proven that, but they do like they look like they're 180 degrees. Yo. What do you mean? Ooh, you know what? Let's number these. That way you can talk about them better. One, two, three, angle four, angle five, angle six, angle seven, angle eight. Talk to me. How do you know that? 
magic. All right. So it turns out this is what Euclid's postulate is. He says that parallel lines will be parallel if and only if the interior angles are supplementary. That's a lot to say. If we have two lines and we cut them with another line, we call that line that we cut with a transversal. Any line that cuts two lines is a transversal. You cool with that? Transversal. And he says, if you have this, and the interior angles, he says interior because they're inside the parallel. See how it's inside, not outside? If they're supplementary, then the lines are parallel. That's his postulate. He can't prove it, but it seems like it should be, right? Tried forever to prove that. Never did. And so we accept it as the fifth postulate. The fifth postulate says that if they're parallel, so if, let's do L, M, if L and M parallel, then that's the implies symbol, it's an arrow. It implies that these two add to 180. We call that being supplementary. You guys remember that from past math classes at all? The reason they have a name for that is because it's very important when they add up to 180, right? You can get a lot of cool things happening when they add up to 180. Same thing if they add up to 90. That's why we have a name for it called complementary. It's because they got tired of saying they always add up to 180. They just said they're supplementary, right? Cuts to the chase. You end up using it so much you came up with a word for it, right? Instead of saying, hey, that guy is a furry little animal. That guy is a furry little animal. That guy is a furry little animal. I love furry little animals, right? Eventually, like, you know what? We should call this something. Let's call it a dog, right? Saves everybody time. It sounds less weird. These guys added 180, those added 180. Oh, when you have things that added 180, it's really cool. Hey, when things are supplementary, you can do a lot of things, right? Supplementary. I tell you this that way when I say it, you know what I mean. There's no, not going to be a vocab quiz. Just need to be able to use the language, speak the language. So if they're parallel, then they're supplementary. Now, he also said that this goes both ways. We're supportive in here. This, if it's supplementary, then that means the lines must be parallel. So anytime I give you this and say that they're parallel, then we know that if I were to draw any transversal line, like that one, that this angle and this angle would always add to 180. Cool? That's the first way. Going in reverse is if I give you two lines and they're cut by a transversal and you know for sure that this angle, for sure, that this angle and this angle are supplementary, then you automatically know that, yep, these lines will be parallel. They'll never intersect. So it's a matter of order. Not everything goes both ways. Sometimes it always goes one direction. Baby, you. Nope. OK. Any 1D fans in here? Or are you more of Biebs? OK. Can't choose. You like them both equally? That makes sense. Katie's a Biebs fan, I think. Katie Hutchison? Oh, yeah. It, for real? Mm -hmm. Is she? Mm -hmm. Okay, I guessed that in first hour, and she got so red. It was amazing. I was like, who are you texting? Biebs? Because she couldn't see the board. It's like, tell him to get you that Canadian health care. He's Canadian. You know that, right? Yeah. See, this is, you're not a Biebs fan. More of a 1D. Who's your favorite 1D member? Someone help her out. There's How many 1D people are there? One Direction. Five? Is this debatable like Euclid's postulates? How many we accept? That makes sense. Well, they, all look like... they all kind of look the same too, don't they? Like, how do you tell them apart? Anyway, which one has your hair, Jackson? Isn't there one with the curly hair? Okay, I don't know either. Beebs was so much more simple. There's one man. I knew some people that worked at Disney World, and they said when he went there to do a concert one time, he was the worst human being they have ever met. Like, he was just absolutely terrible. Now, supposedly, he's gone through, he's been changed, you know what I mean? Like, all you girls out there, they're like, I can change him. Well, apparently, someone did, and he's a better guy now. But for a while, he was like a terrible human being. Interesting. Good for Justin. Good for Katie. There's still hope. Okay, get them together. All right. So, A implies B. What this means is that, hey, for an example, play dumb games, you get dumb prizes. You ever heard that? Play dumb games, you get dumb prizes. You do dumb stuff, you're going to get dumb things that happen to you, right? Now, is this also true in reverse? Play dumb games, you get dumb prizes. Okay. Get dumb prizes, you must have been playing dumb games. What do you think about that? 
You play dumb games, you get dumb prizes. Always true? Not always. Sometimes you get away with it, right? But in general, what about if you got dumb prizes, if bad stuff happens to you, it's because you were doing dumb things? No. Sometimes life just sucks. It has nothing to do with, with you. So in that case, it would not be true that it goes both ways. We wouldn't use this symbol. Well, what's cool about it going both ways is that one implies the other. If the lines are parallel, these will be supplementary. If you end up in a situation where you see that they're supplementary, well, great, you've got parallel lines. And we like parallel lines, not because of the song, but because it gives us lots of information. What information, you might be asking? You tell me. What do you know about angle one, given this diagram? What do you know about angle one? We know six and four are supplementary, right? Could they be the same? Sure, sure, they could be, right? They both be 90. In fact, let's go back a little bit. Here's our transversal. Here's our two lines. And we said these are both 90, that's fair. If, let's number these. Maddie, what's your favorite number? Yeah. How did I know? Uh, tell me about angle eight, Maddie. What do you know about it? Ooh, it's 90 degrees. How do you know that, Maddie? Yeah, something, something, something. She's right. Can anybody convince me why it is? Why that has to be 90? Yeah. It's across from five. What do we call those types of angles? That's an example of one. Vertical angle theorem, right? Scissor theorem. Where's the thing? <coughs> That's not it. Your, Your words, not mine. mine. Right? Scissor theorem. That's what my kids call it. These two angles are scissoring, right? Scissor thing. And so these have to be the same angle. And if that's 90, that's 90. Now, what do you know about angle six? Can't use scissors theorem now, because you don't know about angle seven. What do you know about angle six? Yeah. Ooh, good. So vertical angles, six and eight are what we call an example of a linear pair. What does linear mean? Line, very good, excellent, excellent. You learned all about linear equations in algebra, right? All graphing lines. You know this because you spent an entire semester or two semesters in algebra. Of course you know this, right? Why am I even asking? Linear means line. Pair means, right? Dump truck, right? Or, uh, together, tear, together, right? There you go. The same, two of them. So they're a linear pair because they're on the same line. Now, six and eight, or sorry, five and eight are technically on the same line as well, but they're not back to back, right? So this is a linear pair, six and eight. And linear pairs are always supplementary. Does that make sense? They have to be, right? Because they make a straight line. So if six is 90, how do you know seven's 90? Give me two ways. How do you know seven's 90? Give me one way, yeah. Vertical angle with six. Has to be the same. Since that's 90, this is 90. How else do you know that 7 is 90? Yeah. With what? It takes 2. 5 and 8 are linear pairs. Ooh, oh, wow, scandalous. 7's with 5 and 7's with 8. We don't judge. As long as everybody's getting their needs met and everybody's on the up and up, I don't see why not. What do you know about angle 1? No, Gina. What do you know about angle one? And one is four. Why is one the same as four? Somebody tell me why. Tell me why. I need that on there. You know what I'm talking about? In sync. This is like boy band day, guys. Tell me why ain't nothing but a party. Tell me why. Right? Who's your favorite in sync? 
N, the S, the Y, the N, or the C. Which one? That's how it works, right? What? You forgot the question, didn't you? Vertical angles. What's another reason one? Well, okay, they're vertical. What do you know about two? Gina! It's, it's a linear pair with one and a linear pair with four, which means it has to be a right angle because it has to make 180. And if that's 90, the only number that goes with 90 to make 180 is 90, right? Okay, cool. Boring. Oh, wait. Where are your gods now? What do you know about angle one? No, Gina, no. You can't answer. You're not allowed to. It's not your fault. It's Maddie's fault. What? Vertical angle with what? And if they're vertical angles, vertical angles theorem says they have to match, right? Do I know what they measure? No. They could be 90. They could be 100. They could be anything. But I know they're the same, right? That's a key distinction. What do you know about angle two? Yeah. It's a linear pair with four, isn't it? So what do you know about blue and green? Man up to 180. It has to be the same as six, doesn't it? Because six and four add up to 180. That's what Euclid says, right? The only number that adds with green to make 180 is blue, right? So if I need a number that adds with green to make 180, this has to be blue as well. What do you know about angle 3? Give me two reasons why you know angle 3 is blue. Jaina! Give me two reasons why you know angle 3 is blue. Awesome, she took the easy one. Who's going to get the harder one? Give me another reason why three has to be blue. Yes, Maddie? Yeah, have to add up to 180. And we know green and blue make 180. So it must be blue. What do you know about angle five? Remember, this is all just because these are parallel. We're getting all this information. If they weren't parallel, we had something like this, right? Obviously not parallel lines. We wouldn't be able to do any of this cool stuff. But because they're parallel, what do we know about angle 5? Tell me why. I need that. Gina? It's linear. Uh-huh. So it has to add to 180, which means it must be what? See how blue and green always add to 180? So if this is blue and this adds to 180, then it must be green. How do I know 8 is green? Give me two reasons. Someone other than Gina. Gina's nailing these. In fact, Gina, I'm so sorry. I missed this opportunity. Gina! And then now. Gina! All right, so I'm put Gina out. She's on fire. Can you imagine the door is open? I'm like, she's on fire! And then, like, someone ran in with, like, a smoke, like, like a fire extinguisher. I had that happen one time. I was having two kids race to a dollar bill I had taped underneath the desk. <laughs> Don't ask. It was, it was educational. And I said, instead of saying, go, and they knew where it was, right? They'd finally figured out where, what desk it was, and it was a 20 bucks. Instead of saying, go, I said, fight! And they ran in, pushed all the desks aside. The principal runs in the hallway. He happened to be walking by. He's like, what's going on? What's going on? I was like, oh, sorry, we're just learning about limits in here. This is calculus. The kid got the 20 bucks and he dropped the class the next day. <sighs> Rookie mistake. Five and eight. How do you know eight is green? Tell me two reasons why. If your name isn't Gina, you may answer. Yeah, go ahead. Because one is green, eight has to be green. What do you mean? Because 4 is green. 4 and 8 have to be the same? How do you know that? Ooh, that's not going to fly. You're absolutely right. They will be the same. I need, I need an explanation of why 8 has to be green. It's opposite 5. Ooh, what do we call that? What kind of angles are those? Ooh, close. Not quite. Help them out. 
Somebody. Anybody. Logan. Vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. Give me another reason why 8 has to be green. Go ahead. It's a linear pair with 6, right? Blue's linear pair is always green. Here's blue. There's its linear pair. It must be green. 7. Linear pair with 8. Linear pair with 5, which means it has to be blue. Also vertical angles with 6. You guys are getting bored of this, I can tell. Let's play another fun game. I'm not going to label these angles. Let's t -t 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 talk about them. Um, how would you describe this angle and this angle? What do they have in common? Yeah. Well, they do if they're parallel. I didn't say that. What do they have in common? They're both on the same line. They're both on the same line. Ooh, okay. How are those two angles different than these two angles? Because they're all on the same line. How else are they different? The two peach ones. How are they different than the peach and the red? Yeah. The pe peach ones are what? Linear? What do you mean by that? On the same line? Well, so is pink and red, or peach and red, technically. Ooh, so we have across the line versus what? Same side. Okay. So this is a word that a lot of geometers use, and that's lucky, because when we use the word naturally, and that's the name of the thing, that's good. We'll never forget it. So these angles are both same side, both the peach ones. Okay. What about the peach and the blue? They're same side. We need a way to tell them apart. How is peach and blue different from peach and peach? What do these two have in common that these two don't? They're on the same side of the line, they are, right? Both the peaches and the peach and blue are on the same side. Same side of these lines, you mean? Ooh, so they're inside the parallels, right? Versus outside? What do you call something that's inside? Indoors. Indoors. Give me another name. You can use that if you want. That's fine. I just want to make sure we get as many names as possible. Give me another one. Internal or interior. Geometers call these same side interior. Because they're on the same side of the transversal, right? Because this is our transversal. It's the only line that cuts two others. And they're interior. They're inside the two lines. Usually we say those are parallel just to make things easier because there's a lot of interesting properties that pop up. Same side interior. Euclid's postulate says, if the same side interior are supplementary, then you've got parallel lines, right? So same side interior. Okay. What about the red and the peach again? Are they same side interior? They're interior, but are they the same side? How would you describe them? How would you describe them? They're not same side, they're definitely interior. Let's call them interior. If they're not same side, how would you describe them? Same side's this. In your own words, how would you describe the peach and the red angles? They're interior, I'll give you that. They're not same side, how would you describe that? If they're not on the same side, what are they on? Zach and I are on the same side of the room. Logan and I are on what sides? What? Opposite sides, right? Now, I like that a lot, opposite interior angles. But for some reason, geometers said this word, which you're more than welcome to say opposite. They use alternate. Alternating, right, back and forth. Alternate interior angles. That's what these guys are. Alternate interior. Another example of alternate interior would be these two, right? Inside interior, alternate sides of the transversal, right? What about this guy and... Actually, you know what? Let's save that for later. I goofed that up. Let's do... 
Let's do this one. Let's do blue. What about the two blue angles? How do they relate? First of all, are they alternate or are they on the same side? The two blue angles. Alternate or same side? Which are they? Same side. They're on the same side of the transversal, the right side, yeah. Are they interior or exterior? Here's an example of interior, right? Are they exterior or interior? These two. The blue ones. Yeah. Exterior, right? So same side interior are these guys. Same time exterior are these guys. Another example of same side exterior, right? So we've covered alternate interior and same side interior. We've covered same side exterior. What are we missing, you think? What do you think we're missing? Yeah. Alternate exterior. In theory, these should exist, right? We have interior alternate angles, right? Alternate exterior angles. Give me an example of alternate exterior angles. I'm going to go numbering these so you can tell me which ones you, wa you like. What are alternate exterior? Well, first of all, what are our exterior angles? Looks like 1, 2, 7, and 8 are exterior, right? Which ones are alternate pairs? Yeah. 8 and 1 are alternate exterior, right? Opposite sides of the transversal, alternate, same word, right? And they're exterior because on the outside of the parallels. Now, I said I'd leave green for later. How would you describe green? The two green angles. First of all, interior or exterior? Neither. Your answer should be yes. Yes, they are. <laughs> Neither, right? So they don't fall in any of these categories. Are they same side or opposite side? They're same side. So there's some connection. We call these green angles right here, we call them corresponding. And the reason for that is because they correspond. They go together. How do they go together? How many intersections do I have here? Two. We got a top and we got a bottom, right? Top right corner, top right corner. They correspond. Greens are the top right corners of the intersections. Over here, 1 and 5 are the top left corners of the intersection, so they'd be corresponding. 3 and 7 are corresponding. 4 and 8 are corresponding. You dig? We had to come up with a different name because they're both interior and exterior at the same time. Now, Skylar brought up a good point last class. How would you describe something like this? 5 and 2. Are they interior or exterior? Yes. They're both, right? <laughs> one's exterior, one's interior. Are they on the same side? No. So they can't be corresponding, right? Because these guys are at least on the same side. He called them non-corresponding. I don't know. He's made up a name for it. We don't deal with those very often, two and five. Last thing I want to do before I get you guys out of here. Let's talk about what we know about these angles. Transversal, L, M, L, and M, I'm going to tell you are parallel. Number of the angles. Maddie, what's your favorite number? Yeah. Okay, we'll do eight angles then. All right. Just for you. Give me an example of same side interior angles. Same side interior. Yeah. Four and six are on the same side. They're on the right side of the transversal. They're interior because they're inside. Three and five as well, right? What did Euclid say about same side interior angles? If the lines are parallel, four and six will be what? What did he say about them? If the lines are parallel, these guys will always be what? Does it look like they're the same? are probably not going to be. Remember, it's a postulate, so looks are kind of something you got to go off of, which is good news for some of you, but bad news for the rest of us. 
What do 4 and 6 have to be if these are parallel? What's their relationship? They got to be what? Yeah. That'd be equal 180. What's another name for that? Supplementary, right? So it turns out same side interior angles are always supplementary if the lines are parallel. Give me an example of, I don't know, which one do you want to do? Do you want to change the same side or you want to change the interior? Great, we'll change the same side. What's the opposite of same side? What's the opposite of same side? Anne? What's the opposite of same side? Alternate, yeah, opposite, right? Alternate or opposite, yep. So let's talk about the alternate interior. We'll keep it interior. Alternate interior angles. Give me an example of alternate interior angles. Logan. Three and six or four and five. Easy to go. Three and six and four and five are alternate because they're opposite sides, but they're inside the parallels. You dig? Three and six. What will the relationship be? We know four and six are going to be supplementary, right? What about three and six? How will they relate? Four and six are supplementary. Have to be because they're parallel, right? Three and six, what are they going to be? No, you're not in math class. I know it wasn't you this time. Congratulations. Three and six, what's the relationship going to be? Four and six have to be supplementary because they're parallel, right? Euclid said that. That's a postulate. But what about three and six? What do we know about their relationship? Three and six, what's the relationship? Take a guess. And? Oh, they are across from each other. They're alternate. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Vertical, when we say vertical, they mean this, the one on the board. Does that make sense, right? But there is something about that. Vertical angles are congruent. Three and six will be the same. How do I know three and six are the same? How do I know that three has to be green? Well, doesn't Euclid say that these two have to be supplementary, right? They gotta be. And these have to be supplementary. Don't these also have to be supplementary? So blue and three must go together, and three and five must go together, and four and six go together. So we kind of get this going on here, right? Four and three need to add to 180. Three and this needs to add to 180. Well, if three is green, then five has to be blue, right? Because that's the number that that's the color that goes to three, and vice versa. So alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, we covered same side and alternate. Now we need to do the same thing, but instead of for interior, we got to do it for exterior. Alternate exterior angles. Give me an example of alternate exterior. Is someone going to end Logan's streak? Alternate exterior. You're going to try and end it? Give me an example. One and eight, two and seven. Uh oh, sorry, you're no longer on fire. You're gone cold. She's heating up. She's heating up. One and eight and two and seven are alternate exterior because they're opposite sides, alternate, right? And they're exterior on the outside. What do you know about one and eight? What do you know about one and three? What color must one be? Why blue? 
Yeah, vertical angles here. Or supplementary, right? What about 1 and 8? Maddie. Say it again. How do you know it's blue? Vertical angle theorem, right? And linear pair here, right? We know the linear pair because their vertical has to be these two, right? Whatever those colors are. So alternate exterior angles, like 1 and 8, what do you notice about them? Maddie. What do you notice about 1 and 8? Pressure's on. They are, because they're alternate exterior. That's how we came up with them. What else? What do you notice about them? Didn't tell me. Oh, we need, we need like a sad, you know, like on prices, right? Oh, we need that. They're the same, aren't they? Alternate exterior angles will always be congruent. Because these are the same. How do I know that two is green? Gina, vertical angle three, it's also a linear pair with blue, right, and four. How do I know seven is green? Vertical angles, right? So the alternate exterior angles are always congruent. Again, you don't have to memorize this. I'm just pointing it out. Looks like both sets of alternate angles, both the interior and exterior, will always be congruent. Same side interior angles. We need same side exterior now. Where's my same side exterior color? Blue. Give me an example of same side exterior. Hello? Same side exterior. First of all, we have four exterior angles. One, two, seven, and eight. Which ones are on the same side? I know, this is boring. No, you're not in math class, Gina. It was you this time, I know. These are bored of this, huh? Same side exterior. One, two, seven, and eight are exterior. Which ones are on the same side, kiddos? One, two, seven, and eight are exterior. Which ones are on the same side? Go ahead. Two and eight, one and seven. What do you notice about two and eight? Are they the same measure? Not necessarily, right? They could all be 90, right? But you do know for sure two and eight, if you were to add them up, what would they add up to? They gotta be supplementary. So our same sides, whether exterior or exterior, will be supplementary. Our alternates are always gonna be congruent. When the lines are parallel. Tomorrow, we're gonna take a look at this monstrosity. Lots of parallel lines. We're gonna go from there. See you later, go get some sleep. Gina. Oh, go get some food, go eat. Oh, that's right, it's fifth hour. I have to break the between this and algebra. That's fun. Zach, take it easy. We need to get together and meet about portfolio stuff, man. We haven't met at all. Your grade's like oh. a zero. Yeah. No bueno. See you. Later. Bye, Demery. I don't think I ever saw, well, Zach came in, but I never saw CJ and Andrew. Okay. No, I did see CJ. Okay. Now it's study hall time. I'm going to turn off the stream.